Okay, well, welcome all. Um, uh, we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and if Representative McCarthy would lead us, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Being uh, the 183rd day of the year, midpoint, uh, we meet together, and uh, this will be, we have a full agenda, we'll take public input uh, at the end of the, uh, at the end of the meeting. Um, I would like to open our, uh, our meeting uh, discussing the uh, delegation coordinator position, uh, responsibilities, and compensation. If the delegation uh, remember back and those from the public, um, are we had at uh, at some point last year um, had um, an issue with the commissioner's office and we lost our secretary position. And through uh, legislative action, I want to thank. Uh, Speaker and Representative Chandler and uh, Frank McCarthy and others here. Uh, moving forward, we, we had a uh, Senate bill that was approved, uh, Senate Bill 443, which allowed this uh, delegation the same um, as the Hillsborough and Rockingham County, in that we are able to hire and have a delegation coordinator. Uh, so instead of in the past, the position of the Commissioners was that the secretary, uh, long-standing secretary, was an employee of the county, uh, responsibilities, and uh, rate of pay uh, were to be adjusted. We went through the the onerous uh, legislative um, maneuver uh, to then correct that ourselves. And what I would like to discuss at this point in time is our electing the delegation coordinator. And before we do that, uh, speaking of uh, compensation and how we're going to do that. So in the past, we were paying the secretary $200 a, um, a, a session, a delegation meeting to generate our minutes and uh, notices and so forth. Um, also note that uh, this position person, the coordinator is responsible for their own computer, their own inks, their own printing, and all of that sort of thing. So I would suggest that we continue the pay at $200 a delegation meeting, and with this, um, the delegation how now has a person that will take care of our notices and other duties. We'll be finishing up our uh, uh, legislative uh, delegation member uh, handbook and so forth and I would suggest for those duties as long as we're staying in the bounds of our budget that we have passed and future uh, delegations will decide what that pay will be uh, that I would suggest that we uh, pay the coordinator a rate of $20 an hour and it'll be the responsibility of the uh, chairman um, to um, to keep track of that and to make sure that we stay in budget. Is so any, moved. So moved. Any discussion? Second. Second. I'm just confused. Is it $200 to do everything or going to $20? I'm confused. The, uh, like today's meeting as it normally would be, we were paying $200 a meeting. But for other, um, other duties required, uh, that would be a $20, sending out notices uh, for meetings and that sort of thing. Any further discussion? Yes. Um, thank you. Uh, so the uh, pay will be still done through the county offices? Thank you. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, my suggestion, and we will, we will check with Department of Labor, my suggestion is that she would become a, a 1099 employee. But paid through? Uh, subcontract. It should be paid. Should be paid through the, through the delegate, through the, through the commissioner's office. And so the 1099 will be generated from there. Yes. Okay. 
Thank you. And if that turns out that we're not able to do that, then we'll make an adjustment. Any further discussion? Representative McCarthy. There are other counties that uh, do the same thing. Uh, we can always shut it down to see what they're doing on the pay part of it. And I think there are two other or three other counties that do it. And they're doing it that way too, Representative McCarthy? I don't, I'm not sure which way they're doing it. Okay. What I'm saying is that we can check with them sure. to see how they are doing it. Sure. Thank you. All right. Further discussion? Um, I would um, I would like now to nominate uh, Melissa. Let's, let's you want to that. call the vote? Thank you. Uh, call the vote on the uh, compensation uh, rate for the uh, recording uh, the delegation coordinator. If you're in favor of that motion, which is $200, a delegation meeting and $20 an hour for other other duties uh, called by the chairman. Uh, you'll vote in the affirmative. All those in favor would say aye. 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 Those opposed? The record show it was the unanimous uh, approval. Uh, with that, I would like to nominate uh, Melissa Siemens, our Second. long time. Uh, moved and seconded. Um, Second. Second. Are there any Second. other nominations? Hearing none, if you're in favor of the motion to appoint uh, Melissa Siemens as delegation coordinator, signify by saying aye. 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 If you're opposed, nay. Uh, motion passed unanimous. Uh, Melissa, would you please join us? Do you have a copy of the agenda? Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. It's awfully nice to have you back with yeah, us. Thank you. I'm very glad to be back. I look forward to working with you in the future. As you always have. <laughs> um, we are, um, I will turn to <coughs> the clerk. Uh, review and approval of minutes of March 19th, 26th, 28th, and May 29th, 2018. Great. Can I make one other comment uh, first? Please. Um, it was noted uh, in the minutes of the March 26th meeting at the end of the meeting um, that there is still $2,800 in the budget relative to this position that we just uh, approved. Thank you for that. Um, and uh, uh, preparing for this meeting, uh, Melissa did uh, several minutes and the agenda. They were emailed to everyone, but I know it was late last night, so you may not have seen them. Um, but uh, I believe also that we need to, um, for state reporting purposes, um, get the minutes that have not been approved approved. Um, and uh, I would uh, ask that uh, we approve the minutes from March 26th, March 28th, and May 21st, um, which uh, were sent last night, and that if there are any changes needed, Although they track um, the uh, government oversight uh, uh, video and audio of the meetings very closely. Um, so, and I have reviewed them and they are uh, <coughs> accurate, uh, at least from my perspective. So I would uh, ask that we approve all of them. If there are changes after you have a chance to look at them, we can do that next week. What about March 19th? That was it. I could have, that was an error on the agenda. The ninth, after review, the 19th ones have already been approved. Oh, yeah. So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Um, any discussion? If you're in favor of the minutes uh, as distributed with the possibility of amendments uh, at a future time, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? And that motion passes. Thank you, Ed. Thank you for the. Uh, extra duties that you performed on our behalf. Mr. Chairman, we have uh, originals for clerk signature okay. now or in the future. Thank you. Thanks. I think we're back on the roll here. <coughs> uh, New Hampshire Cooperative Expen uh, Extension Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, Klaus is here. Uh, he had joined us in the uh, if just introduce yourself again, please. My name is Klaus Telmark. Uh, I'm the office administrator for the uh, Cooperative Extension here in Carroll County. Uh, and again, a little over a month ago, I presented our memorandum of understanding uh, to the delegation. 
Uh, if there are any questions explaining it, and, uh, I'm here today to see if we can uh, have a signature uh, from the chair. As well, we agreed to do that. We did, we did, why, but why are we here? Um, he wanted, uh, we had not gotten around to actually signing the document, and he asked if we could come by and give him a signature. But I think so we've already given you the authority to sign yes, it. Yes, so we're going to do that right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very positive. Yeah. <laughs> you have a vote to sign it again? Or? No, I think I think you've summed up our uh, position. And I think it just needs my signature. Yes, and then, and then and the commissioners. We'll talk it later. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, So before I um, before I bring up uh, Commissioner uh, uh, Myers to speak, I would like to take the liberty of introducing my special guest here today, uh, noted uh, international tax attorney, youngest member to work in the uh, White House, as uh, you've heard me dragging this gentleman before, to work in the uh, Bush White House in the uh, speech writing department, power couple from Texas. Ashley McConkey, uh, his bride, who is advisor, policy advisor to the longstanding Speaker of the House of the Texas Texas House, big one, Gene, and um, uh, personal secretary to uh, President Bush uh, when they opened up the uh, museum in Dallas. So, if you wouldn't mind just standing for a moment, and, uh, my family. <laughs> Commissioner Myers, if you could come yes. forward, I apologize for not having such a glowing uh, introduction for you. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's a little hard to follow that. It's a little hard to follow that. Mr. Uh, Chairman, yes, very make impressive. Make sure you're announcing who the person is and what organization you're with. I'd be happy to Thank do that. You. Thank you. Uh, Just for the record. Right. Come on for that. Uh, this is uh, Commissioner Jeffrey Myers from New Hampshire, Hampshire Department of uh, Health and Human Services. Um, Probably three or four months ago, uh, the commissioner had met with all of the county uh, delegation chairmen in Concord uh, and told us of uh, funding that was coming through the counties for the benefit of uh, Carroll County and the others. Uh, somewhat of a unique situation where the money was going to come to the county first and then um, it was going to be turned back to the state and then the state was then going to ensure that that money was distributed for programs only in Carroll County for the portion that we are entitled to. There's a nice ending to this story, and the ending to the story is, for the courtesy of doing that, the uh, Carroll County is going to receive some form of compensation for that to which uh, we will be able to use for some worthy project that's uh, deemed necessary. So with that, in bringing money to the county, I would love to hear from you this morning, Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. I appreciate your willingness to have me here this morning to talk to you about this. Um, I, I've got a couple of handouts this morning. Um, I passed out just a few slides that I'll go over very quickly um, just to remind everybody what this program is. Um, uh, and as the Chairman said, uh, the, uh, in the course of looking at how all of the counties claim uh, their Medicaid allowable expenses for the purposes of generating ProShare, which is a payment that the state makes, uh, leverages federal funds on behalf of the counties in order that the county nursing homes um, are able to obtain a Medicare level reimbursement. Um, we were able to generate a very significant additional amount of ProShare starting this year, which has just been paid, and I'll go over that. I've got the numbers for all the counties, so everybody can see what every county got last year, what every county is getting this year, and what that difference is. It's very significant. Um, but I'm here mostly to talk about the program that's been operating in the state now for, well, we're really entering the uh, uh, second full year um, where it's starting to provide services. It is, a, it is a program that was approved by the Secretary of Health and Human Services back in January of 2016. Um, and it leverages 
um, federal dollars that are being invested in the state in mental health and substance use disorder services. Um, if you look at the handout on the second slide, you'll see a list of challenges that are there. And I'm sure all of you are familiar with those challenges, whether it's individuals who are waiting at hospital emergency rooms for inpatient admission and other community-based mental health services, whether it's the opioid crisis that obviously has devastated the state and many other states over the last number of years, um, and other challenges that we have in terms of workforce and capacity to provide these services. We look very hard, uh, before I became commissioner, I spent about a year of my life uh, putting this uh, application together to the federal government so that we could um, leverage this federal spending. There's a program um, that has existed at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services for about the last 30 or so years, whereby the federal um, secretary um, is given authority by the Congress in the uh, Medicaid Act to waive certain requirements um, uh, if it's in the interest of the Medicaid program um, uh, and basically provide federal matching funds uh, for state expenditures and for local expenditures. And so that's essentially what we've done. The state spends money, it spends general funds um, that are not matched by uh, the federal government and that are not needed for maintenance of effort. Um, that is, they're not needed uh, in order to access other federal grants or block grants that we get. Um, and the county also has expenditures at its nursing homes that are now not matched. So a few years ago when we put this together, I was able to identify about $10 million in state spending that was not matched, um, and about $10 million on the county side that wasn't matched. And I'll explain that in just a second. And by, um, uh, under the terms of our approval, um, we can uh, take the county monies um, when it's put into contracts to the delivery networks, which I'll go over in a minute here, um, it gets matched for about 20 million. So it produces, so 10 would produce about $20 million. And then there's 10 million on the state side that we're able to leverage for about $30 million a year. And that's what the federal government approved. They approved an expenditure authority to provide the state with approximately $30 million a year for five years or $150 million. Um, and so what we've done in order to deliver these services, if you look on slides four and five very briefly, we've created what are called um, integrated delivery networks. So there are hospitals and physician practices and community mental health centers uh, and social service agencies that are now working together. There's about 350 organizations across the state that are working together in ways that they've never worked before, uh, together before. And the purpose of this program really is threefold. One is to increase workforce and capacity to provide mental health and substance use disorder services. Secondly is to integrate those services with primary care. So that if you go to your primary care physician, as many people in the state have, um, and they may have a child with behavioral health needs, um, that the primary care physician doesn't say, sorry, I can't help you. You need to go over there in order to access those services. Those services can be accessed within a primary care setting in New Hampshire. So we're really making sure that there is no wrong door in order to access primary care and these behavioral health services that are so critical. And lastly, we're doing this because we want to provide people who are transitioning out of institutional settings with, with wraparound services so that they can uh, be in the community. Um, for example, somebody coming out of the county jail. Uh, most people coming out of county jails in this state either have a mental health issue or a substance use disorder issue or both. Um, and there's lots of data to show that. Um, and so if that person is gonna be able to succeed in the community and deal with the issues, get help for the issues that they have, then we need to have providers in the community who are focusing on that population and provide them with services in addition to the medical services like transportation or childcare or other kind of social services 
in order to help them succeed in the community so that they're not back in the county jail. Similarly, somebody coming out of a nursing home, you know, that needs support and services in the community. And people coming out of substance use disorder treatment programs or coming out of New Hampshire Hospital or coming out of other treatment facilities to get needed supports in the community. And so what we did is divide the state up into seven distinct regions, and they're identified on slide five of what I've handed out. Um, and Carroll County is in the Integrated Delivery Network, which is known as IDN7, um, and that's the last on this list. It includes, um, uh, as you can see, uh, the northern part of the state. There are about 15,000 Medicaid lives in the county. And so what we've done thus far, for the very first year of the program, the federal government allowed us to draw the county funds, to get the match, I should say, on the county funds as if that were a state program. Because they knew it was going to take time for our department to work with all the counties to put uh, uh, the different funding mechanism in place. Um, and so the, it was about 19 million, a little bit more than 19 million that went out during the first year and that was to allow these integrated delivery networks to uh, build out some information technology capability so that a patient's record could move lawfully and in a confidential manner between providers as, as it would need to. It allowed them to retain some staff. Um, it allowed, and this isn't the state hiring staff. I want to be very clear about this. This is, you know, the, the providers in your community, the mental health center, hospitals and so forth, for them to hire additional staff so that they could provide these new services. That's the first kind of $19.5 million. Under our approval, the government um, basically told the state that at a point in time that um, we could not treat the county funds as if it were our program, that we had to, um, we had to kind of uh, draw down that money in a different way. And to make it as simple as possible, um, what they said we could do is that we would leverage our pro share payments. Um, and so every year, as you know, the county uh, nursing homes get a pro share payment um, based on their Medicaid allowable cost, based on the number of patients that are in their beds um, over the course of the year and other uh, factors as well. Um, and so we looked at how all 10 nursing, 11 nursing homes, excuse me, how all 11 nursing homes across the state were accessing their Medicaid allowable costs, how they were determining their Medicaid allowable costs. And what we found is that um, there was a better methodology to use to ensure that they were drawing down as much as possible. Um, and as a result of that, we've been able to access more funds. The government anticipated from the very beginning that at a point in time, we would draw down money on behalf of the counties. We would then, because that's, those are county monies, I want to be very clear, not state money, we were drawing down on behalf because the state has the contract with the federal government to be able to do this. The counties don't have that direct legal relationship, if you will. So we were drawing down this money on behalf of the counties we transferring the money to the counties. Um, and then we were going to ask the counties in order to fund this program, which is a five-year program that runs through December 31st of 2020. And we'll talk about what happens after that in a, in a minute. Um, that the counties would recognize the value of these services in their area, in their counties, areas, uh, and for their citizens. And they would be willing to take a portion of those funds and invest it in the program. And I'm going to go over the numbers in a very detailed manner in just a minute. Um, because we're not asking any county to give back to the state any money that was budgeted or expected for ProShare. The only pot of money that we're talking about is the money that the state's been able to access above and beyond what the normal ProShare payment has been. And again, I'll go over the numbers in just a second. Um, and I think there's a way to do that, is the chairman was saying that um, is going to be, um, uh, hopefully, um, 
something that you're interested in. Um, you know, what are the projects? Um, I don't, um, there's a slide that talks about um, community projects, uh, statewide projects. So what are the, I'm gonna pass along a, a, uh, another handout that has a, one second, sir, there you go. Um, uh, more of a description um, about the projects that the delivery network is doing in this area. Um, it identifies the organizations that participate, like Northern Human Services and Amnesty Community Health, North Country Healthcare, Weeks, um, Huggins. Um, you'll see all of that. Yes, sir. And <clears throat> there is a funding schedule in here which shows you the planned funding for um, IDN 7, which includes Carroll County as well. Um, and so you'll have a sense. Um, there's a statewide project, as I referred to, that has to do with information technology to ensure that all these organizations are connected. But there are local projects, and I want to just emphasize that these projects were selected by, by the community. Not by us, not by the department, not by the state, but by all of the local organizations in your area. And the county uh, the county, uh, the counties were mandatory participants in this project because we wanted to ensure that every county benefited uh, and the county's citizens benefited given the fact that we were leveraging some of the county expenditures in order to fund the program. Um, and I know um, uh, the IDN is here. Could you just introduce yourself so they know who you are? Sure. So I am April Allen, and I work for the North Country Health Consortium, which is the administrative lead agency for Region 7 IDN. And as the commissioner said, that is all of Coos, all of Carroll, and Northern Grafton. And uh, I, too, have a handout if there's additional questions more at the county level, but I'll sit quietly and if there's questions, I'm happy to answer them. So the last item I'm going to pass up for now uh, is more are the numbers and I want to focus now on what the financing is all about um, what money we've been able to access for all the counties and what the state's request is and that's going around now um, as I said we um, we looked at how every nursing home was accessing their Medicaid allowable costs um, and there are some nursing homes that um, are operating at, at, uh, with deficits. Um, there are other nursing homes that uh, are, one nursing home that actually operates in the black, that's Hillsboro, um, with, with a profit, um, which is unusual, but it, it, it's the case. Um, and then there are a couple of others um, that are not uh, operating at a profit, but they are um, operating at closer to the Medicare allowable cost for their services. So we divided the, uh, all 11 into two groups known as ProShare 1 and ProShare 2. And you can see the groupings on this uh, spreadsheet that I've handed out. So Belknap, Hillsborough, and Sullivan are in one group. All the others are in the second group. Um, in 2017, we were able to work with all the counties and identify 23.7 million, roughly, in uh, cost that was leveraged for your pro share payment. Um, and it's broken down, obviously, by county. In 2018, we just made, just a couple of days ago, we made payments to all the counties totaling $47.9 million, which is roughly a $24.3 million increase over 2017. It's significantly more money. Um, and so what's on this sheet, you can see the 2018 payment, the 2017 payment, the increase over 17, and then there's some calculations on the right um, that just, uh, it's there just for illustration. Um, it shows the math of what half of the increase would be or what 60% of the increase would be. So let me go back to the program and kind of tie this together, and then I'm happy to answer questions that you may have. Thank you. So as I said, we scoped the program to run at approximately $30 million a year, 10 million of which is generated by the state, and the other 20 generated uh, through the county. 
Um, and because that 20 represents essentially a 50% matching rate, it's really 10 million from the counties that when it's put into the contracts that are approved by the governor and council that go out to the delivery networks, that money gets matched. Um, and so uh, what, and that's not a grant. I want to be very clear. We have to kind of earn that money. We have to demonstrate that there's costs that can be matched. For the state part, the state has to continue to spend that $10 million that it's identified. If we stop spending that $10 million on the state side, we would not be able to get that matched, obviously. So it all depends on everybody kind of doing their part. So as I said, the, um, we're not asking for any, not a penny, of uh, the pro share payment that was budgeted by the county or that the county anticipated. Sometimes you budget a number, but, but based on historical trend, you expect a little bit more than that. So we're not asking for anything that you expected or were planning on spending. So let's look at Carroll specifically. So in 17, it got 1,195,373. It, it got 1,527,792.50 for 18, uh, which is an increase uh, over 17 of 332,419. What we are hoping Carroll County is willing to consider is taking half, only 50% of that 332, which if we've done our math correctly, is $166,209.75. Um, and, uh, and taking that money and transferring it, um, uh, and I want to talk about that in a second as well, to the state for the sole purpose, only purpose is to putting that out into uh, contracts with the delivery network for services in the county. Okay. I'm not going to take a penny of that money and keep it in the department. I want to be really clear about that. I'm not using this money for administration. I'm not hiring anybody with this money. I'm not, I'm not doing anything with the money. The money is going to come back into the IDN. The local IDN. Correct. The local IDN. So, um, Obviously, for the program to work, we're hoping that every county agrees to do this. So what happens if a county does not do it? So I'm going to pick on Hillsborough, because I don't want to pick on Carroll, because I'm <laughs> sitting with all of you. <laughs> but I'm going to pick on Hillsborough. So what if Hillsborough said to me, you know, Jeff, you know, it's a great program, but we have other needs this year. We're sorry, we can't give you any money. What's going to happen? So what's going to happen in that event is that I'm going to reduce the services. I have to reduce the services going into Hillsborough County. I'm not going to reduce Stratford services or Carroll services or Coos's services because Hillsborough didn't contribute. I'm going to reduce the services in Hillsborough County. And the same is true with any county that elects for whatever reason uh, not, not to do this. Um, and I want to be clear again, this, is, this, this money that you were just transferred is your money. It's not mine. And there's nothing in law, federally or in the state, that requires you to give any portion of this to the state for this program. What we're hoping is you'll see the value in this program and are willing to invest. So I want to say one more thing. What happens after 2020? What happens after 2020 is that the state is going to continue drawing this money down on your behalf. And because of the methodology that we have now kind of worked out, um, you will continue to access a pro share payment that is, you know, consistent with your 2018 payment. You're going to be getting a bump, you know, going forward, conditioned upon kind of one thing is that your cost structure in your nursing home stays consistent with what it is today. I mean, if, for example, you know, there was a 50% vacancy rate at the nursing home, you know, then it, you, you, know, you wouldn't be accessing enough, as, as much money. But if, if the nursing home continues to operate kind of consistently as it is in 18, then you're going to be getting the same payment after that. The federal government has told uh, current administration, I should say, in, in Washington has told all states, not just New Hampshire, that it, um, it's not going to fund these uh, delivery waivers after they run out. They, 
um, they've decided to put federal resources in a different direction. Now, it's a long time between now and the end of 2020. That policy could change. But it's certainly the state's intention, I want to be very clear about this, if this waiver is not renewed at the end of 2020, we will continue to draw down this money on the county's part, and we will give you this money, and you will spend it as you decide. It's, it's your money. And so, you know, if the waiver doesn't continue, then, uh, then the state's not going to be asking for any contribution by the county. I will tell you that I'm hopeful that by 2020, this waiver program can run without public money. In other words, I'd like the managed care organizations to invest in this program, invest some of their profits, that is, in the program. Um, I'd like the commercial insurance carriers in New Hampshire to see the value in this for their members, and they invest their private dollars in this program. Um, and so hopefully this program can transition and run on some level um, on non-public money. Now, um, you know, I'm always happy to have the legislature decide to invest public funds in a program as well. I'm not asking for that. I want to be clear. If the legislature decides to do that, that'd be great. But, but I think there's ways for this program to operate and continue on non-public money in the future as well. So, uh, so as I said, I think what we're hoping is that we're the county willing if um, about 50% of the excess payment, that is 50% of the additional 332, if that's invested, then we'll leverage 332,000 that can be put into the program. So I've said a lot, and I'm going to stop, <coughs> and I'm going to try to answer all of your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner. Representative Evelyn, I'll come back to you. <coughs> Thank you for the question, Mr. Chairman. I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Commissioner. Um, the increase from 17 to 18 is 332,000, which is the lowest in all of the counties. Right. We're also now the lowest pro share payment of all the counties when we were almost second to last. Right. Could you tell us how Carroll County looks like it was left out again? It wasn't left out at all. Um, so the payments are dependent on your costs in the nursing home, on the number of bed days, on the number of patients, how many are Medicaid, how many are not Medicaid. I mean, Howard can certainly speak, he may have some of that information off the top of his head. So it's not as if we get a pot of money and we get to divide it evenly. That's not allowable. That would violate federal law, would violate state law. What we're allowed to do is determine what the nursing home's Medicaid allowable costs were and the number of patient bed days and some other factors and use a methodology that has to be approved by the federal government to determine the payment. We've, we've done this, you know, we've done it according to, we've had it approved by the federal government as well. These numbers were approved by the federal government. So, um, so it's not as if we're trying to reduce anybody's payment or cause anybody to um, uh, be paid inequitably. This is what your nursing home costs were able to support in 18. Thank you. Um, Could I just follow up on yes, that question? Thank you. Just to uh, ask for clarification. Sure. Are, are there other nursing homes that are um, defining uh, payments and costs differently that allow a larger percentage of pro share? Pro share? Is there a different way of looking at uh, the way we bill or our costs that would make a difference? We did. That's what we changed this year. I mean, we're pulling in 24 million more on behalf of all the counties because, and no disrespect to anybody in any county, but we the, the nursing homes were not pulling down as much uh, allowable costs as they could have, and so unfortunately for Carol, that was only a, that was a smaller percentage increase. But as a state, obviously, we're leveraging a lot more. And I understand that. But I'm yeah. asking on the, at the Carroll County level, oh. is there a way of... Uh, Not that I'm... I think we... Well, based on all the information that we have from the nursing home, which is their Medicaid cost report, um, and these payments, you know, there's a lag. So we were looking at the 2016 Medicaid mm -hmm. cost report in order to determine these numbers. Next year, we'll be looking at 2017's cost report and so forth and so on. So. 
Um, so we think that we've got it right. Um, uh, you know, if um, if, it, if at some point it's helpful to people, um, you know, I'm not an accountant, but I could bring my uh, Medicaid director, uh, who is uh, has a tremendous financial skill, um, and we could walk you through how these numbers were actually calculated. We'd be happy to do that sometime. Um, but we think we are based on what. Um, the patient mix and everything else that's going on at the nursing home, we think we're leveraging as much as we can at the moment. Thank you. I, uh, I will get to you. Uh, uh, Director, one moment. Uh, Representative Marsh. Yeah, two, two questions that I, I'd like to ask. The first is straightforward, and I want to make sure I heard you correctly. You asked us to transfer uh, uh, this amount of money for IDN 7 contracts in Carroll County. Is it appropriate for us to specify that? Because we, Carroll, IDN 7 is pretty big. Right. Um, well, so what? We, so what? Our hope is is that um, if the counties contribute a, a fifty percent uh, value of their <coughs> increase, then the funding plan for Carol, which is in the other handout, mm -hmm. um, can go forward. Okay. Um, and that I just want to refer to it briefly on the well, it's the back of the second page. Um, there's a payment that already came into seven at 2.4. So these funds, so I, I want to be clear about one thing. The state doesn't determine where the money goes in the IDN. I don't have anything, in fact, I have nothing to say about it. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't decide how much goes into Carroll County or how much goes into, you know, some uh, other portion of Grafton County or whatever that's in this IDN. It's, it's the governing structure of the IDN which includes the county, mm -hmm. that are making these decisions. This is all locally run, and I just I need to emphasize that. It's not me or my team sitting in Concord figuring out where the money goes. Okay. Uh, second question. The second question has to do with maximizing the amount of money that Carroll County gets, because yep. it seems like we're getting less money than some of the other counties. Now, we're very proud of the job how he's doing at the nursing home and controlling costs, uh, no, but no, should yeah, we be right. paying more attention to making sure we get all appropriate items on the cost report so that we could perhaps maximize this going forward? Well, again, we think we've done that now for 18. We think we've increased the amount we can draw for Cal County to the greatest extent possible based on the 2016 cost report that um, was generated. Um, uh, so, you know, when we get the 2017 report, we're going to scrutinize that and we're going to attempt, we're going to make sure that we're drawing as much money based on that cost report as we possibly can on behalf of the county. So we'll work, I mean, Howard's doing a great job. I, th this is, th this is, this, this is complicated stuff. Right. Um, you know, and, and because of how we have grouped the nursing homes, that also is part of this methodology that has helped us leverage this, these extra funds. So this is not a criticism of any nursing home in the state at all. It's just that, you know, we put our lens to it and we, we engaged some folks down at CMS in Baltimore and they worked with us, you know, looking at those cost reports and we were able to squeeze out some extra funds. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Representative um, March. I think I understand. Can I make the analogy that this is similar to like what we do in the USDA food program? That those, like the school districts and the daycare centers, those who have a lot of free and reduced pie price yeah. children well, yeah. determines how much money we receive. And yeah. I think we've always been pleased that we have quite a few private clients yeah. that help us financially in our nursing home. Yeah. But that, conversely, when you get to a program like this, it does reduce how much money we receive that way. Yeah. So it really depends on on the balance of the the um, clients that we have. Yes, it does. So um, we can't change that unless we change stop taking so many private clients. Thank you, Administrator Chandler. And that's exactly the reason for the for the differential. Carroll County has just over twenty five percent average census in twenty sixteen. Um, which pays twice the Medicaid rate. Overall, we're generating more revenue, but it's at the expense of a reduced pro share. So our pro share is, is attributable. A reduced pro share compared to other counties is attributable to our higher than average private census. But we still come out ahead. We, even with that, we come out ahead financially. Mr. Chair, Um So 
uh, Commissioner, I, I just need some, some help um, understanding. Sure. The nursing home is funding the IDNs. Is that what you're basically saying? Because I, I don't understand what the nursing home has to even do with the IDNs. <clears throat> okay. So, what, so a couple things. So it's not just that, I mean, the, the pro share is generated through the nursing home, mm -hmm. but it, it is funds that belongs to the county as a whole, not just the nursing home. The nursing homes are part of the IDNs, uh, in essence. The counties are part of the IDNs because if someone um, is uh, comes out of the nursing home, um, uh, let's say someone is in the nursing home because they fell in their home. Um, and uh, and so they you know they've been in the nursing home for a while, but they're able to come out and go back home. You know, some of what we're doing is trying to ensure that they have supports in their home, whether it's home visiting, whether it's construction of a ramp, whether it's something else, so that they can stay in their home as long as they wish to and as long as they can, and not end up too quickly back in the nursing home. The more they're in the nursing home, I mean that involves the county expense, mm -hmm. particularly if they're not on a private pay type system. So. Um, so our view is that um, uh, the county as a whole is benefiting from, from the program, including the nursing home. But if we didn't have the nursing home, or if we didn't have, uh, the, if, if we weren't taking Medicaid, then you wouldn't be getting this money. You would be getting no pro share right. if you didn't take Medicaid. Right. The pro share pay would go away. Yeah. So then how would you fund the idea then? Well, we would, you would have had a different funding structure at that point. We may not have been able to do it. I mean, if, if nursing homes didn't take Medicaid in the state, we wouldn't be able to leverage these funds. You know, I can mm -hmm. certainly agree with that. Commissioner Hounsell, and then I'll come back to Commissioner Bond. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner, thank you. Sure. Uh, so basically what you're saying, to, uh, if we return a portion of the pro chair to DHHS, you will in turn return it back into IDN 7, Region 7. Yes, it's going to go okay. into the IDN. Absolutely. Right, so it will go into their contract, yes. Right, so my concerns are, does the participation of Carroll County assure that the money will go only to the Carroll County portion of IDN 7? And I can't assure you of that because it's the, it's the IDN governing board that makes the decisions about where the money gets allocated. Follow it's, not, it's not the state. The state's not deciding whether or not it goes to a provider in Carroll or one provider in Carroll versus another provider in Carroll. You follow me. I, I do. I do. I have been. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I'll just quickly go over some stuff because I don't want to take up your time. But uh, once again, we're seeing that 50% for every county is being uh, presented as being equitable. I, I, I'm waiting for the state to understand that 50% for Hillsboro is easier than 50% for a smaller county, and that should be maybe be looked at. That every county can't afford 50%, but perhaps every county can have their unique participation level. The other thing is, uh, I, going forward, I'd be really concerned about budgeting. Uh, you know, you had mentioned something about what we establish for budget becomes a benchmark of some sort. I don't fully understand that. Okay. And the uh, my question is. Uh, what if Carroll County does return money mm -hmm. and Coloss County doesn't, both being in Region 7? Yeah. Uh, how would that re impact IDN 7? It seems to me that if they didn't, from what you're saying, that money belonging to Carroll County would find its way no. to Coloss. No, no. That's, I said the opposite. If Coloss doesn't participate, I'm going to, I'm going to have to take some measures. I'm going to have to amend the contract with the IDN to ensure that uh, programs get reduced in co-ops. No, okay. if Carroll funds it but co-ops doesn't, then services are going to be reduced in co-ops, but not in Carroll. Thank you. Yeah. That's yeah. what you need. Yeah. And, and, and for the state representatives in the room and, and you know, for the speaker who I've known and, and worked with for many years, one of the challenges that I'm trying to uh, avoid here is um, I don't want to have donor accounts. You know? Uh, that's not a good thing uh, for anybody. Um, so you know, so that's why I said that if, example, if cost doesn't fund it, then I'm not going to reduce 
you know, services somewhere else, I'm gonna, I've got to reduce services and costs because I don't want Carol to be paying for services and costs when costs didn't fund it. Um, and so I'm, I, I'm, you know, it may not be perfect. I'm trying to be as equitable as possible. I understand your point about the percentages. Um, again, this is for, you know, a three-year period, essentially, um, and then there's a whole new discussion that can be had. Thank you, Representative Butler, and I'll come back to Representative Schmidt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have been, and I believe uh, uh, Representative McConkie has been a representative on the Carroll County Public Health uh, Advisory Committee um, as the legislative uh, representative. And that group of uh, Carroll County uh, Public Health Organizations is a part of the IDN7. And so through that, I have uh, become aware of the, some of the work that's being done in the IDN. And it is very well integrated. It is really uh, uh, prom promoting um, integrated uh, efforts uh, at a variety of different levels, including mental health services, um, throughout uh, the integrated delivery network. Um, which includes both counties. Um, it has been uh, considerate of the interests of all of the populations within the um, three counties, um, and it has been, from my understanding, uh, impressive um, interdisciplinary work. Um, so I would expect that COAS would agree if Carol does agree. And I would expect that the um, resource delivery would be as equitable as the work in the IDN um, has been, as far as I understand it, over the past uh, year or so. Um, it's, I think, been really impressive work. My concern has always been what happens after 2020. Yeah. Um, but some of the work, I think, can be uh, managed by the systems that will exist by the end of 2020. Um, and uh, then we're going to need to look at how do we maintain what we've gained and how do we continue in that, in that uh, direction. But I just want to reinforce that I think that the work being done by the IDN, uh, at least in our neck of the woods, has been really impressive. Yeah. I, I should let you know that last week Graft, the Grafton delegation voted uh, to go forward and to do this. Uh, Stratford has already budgeted this, you know, they've already decided, they're, they're actually, the Stratford County is the lead for their IDN over on the seacoast area. So those two counties have already made decisions um, already. Uh, the other counties are in the process of doing Thank you. One other question, Please. are we going to have to do this every year? How is the approval being done? So I uh, provided uh, to your administrator uh, a couple weeks ago now, and I've got copies. Uh, he was kind enough to make some copies for me this morning um, uh, of a kind of a resolution that you could consider. The resolution would approve essentially three things. One, that you would um, uh, make an investment for 18 based uh, on your additional revenue, uh, and then you would also do it for 19 and 20. Um, you've already gotten your 18 payments, so all the numbers are known. For 19, um, uh, the, you would approve a payment um, only following the submission of a detailed description of the calculation of the payment so that you would know, the county would know in advance, obviously. Um, uh, for 19 and 20, so you could approve it all uh, at what time. And then for all three years, there's a part of the resolution that authorizes the administrator to work with us in order to how to structure this intergovernmental transfer. I mean, there's the mechanics of how the money needs to move, and that's something that you would, if you chose, only if you chose, um, to authorize the administrator to um, work out with the department. And I can uh, circulate this uh, at any time you'd like me to. Start circulating. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Representative Schmidt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good morning, Commissioner. Always good morning. Good to see you again. Thank you. You too. Uh, Commissioner, you uh, used the word hopefully uh, a number of times, yeah. and uh, also uh, 
discussed a pretty good increase in money, 24 million. And you know, I know in my sense, the word hopefully in money don't necessarily balance very well. <laughs> yeah. So I wonder if you could discuss uh, a little bit the governance structure for the IDN boards. Who is accountable? Uh, yeah. for federal money. You know, tell me how this is sure. going to work. Sure. I'm going to call uh, to begin that discussion. So for Region 7, um, every steering committee, the state said, had to have a certain representation on that steering committee, public health, federally qualified health centers, hospitals, mental health, et cetera. So Region 7 had an appointed steering committee, numerous um, representation from Carroll County. Actually, Jason Henry sits on our steering committee. You know, we have representation at Huggins Hospital. Emily Benson, before she departed, you see, um, you know, Carroll County Public Health was on there. Quite a few different ones. So then, but we also try to have um, county as well. So be it making sure we have sector and county representation. Region seven members voted to do like a request for proposal process. So as the funds come into our agency, so our agency has fiduciary and reporting responsibility. And so basically, um, a request for proposal. Think of it as a mini grant type of process. State gives us the funding. We hold it at our office. Um, agencies within the whole IDN7 apply in this grant sub-recipient proposal process. It goes through a three-level review process, starting at the steering committee, and they look at does it meet goals and making sure it's within budget, appropriate use of revenue, basically. And then it's literally, they write a second paper to look at evaluations, work plans. And then we have work groups. So we have our steering committee, and then we have four work groups, a clinical, a financial, a data, and a community engagement. And each of those work groups have reviewers that review these concept papers. And there's a scoring matrix that is used, and then the final decisions, they all get conglomerated and go back to the steering committee, and they make those final funding decisions. You know, they really are looking at making sure there's integration. It's not just hiring people, it's making sure those people are also integrated to meet the goals of the IDN. There's significant conversations around that to making sure. Um, you know, I know the commissioner passed out some paperwork, but uh, Carroll County so far, since the funding process has been in place, about 1.27 million. Uh, you know, Huggins Hospital, great, great work going on. And many other agencies, you know, Carroll County Corrections, great transition program going on. You know, there's numerous ones, and I don't know what um, the commissioner would hand you all out. I'm happy to go through some of that work. Um, Memorial Hospital, you know, a great um, multi-agency collaboration going on with Soccer River, Memorial Hospital, visiting nurses, um, children, uh, children Unlimited. So this is really, really good. Thank you. Follow-up for Smith. Just one very quick follow-up. Um, if I'm hearing you correctly, and correct me if I'm incorrect in my assessment here, so what are you, are you telling me that the IDN boards that establish are autonomous? In other words, is there a state agency or a federal agency that perhaps might come in and say, you're adequately spending this money or you're not adequately spending that money? I guess that's... So, so uh, there's oversight by the state. Um, there are, um, as you just heard, there, you know, one of the members of each IDN is the fiscal agent. So they, that, that entity is an entity that has the capacity to oversee the collection and expenditure of funds and the collection of data and other information that gets reported back to the department. And then in turn, the state, uh, you know, is required to report back to the federal government. The program subject to audit, um, as any program is that the state runs on behalf of the federal government. So um, there's a lot of oversight. There's a lot of transparency. There are reports that are filed that are put up on our website constantly showing what the IDNs are doing, what their, their reports are. Um, you know, we are required by the federal government to have a firm that evaluates the effectiveness of this program. So we have a contract that was approved by governor and council hiring a firm to do that. Um, uh, I mean, there's tremendous oversight to this program. And I can assure you, again, that the money we receive, the money that we are leveraging, is actually going back out across the state into services. I'm not using it to hire the staff in the department. I'm not using it for administration. I mean, that money is having an impact in the community. So 
So, Commissioner, you're, you're convinced that there's adequate controls here to yes. ensure? Yes, I am. I am. Okay. Representative Thank Chandler you. and then Bucco, please. Two questions, if I may. Please. Thank you, Mr. Chandler. <coughs> when does this need to be approved? So uh, ideally, um, I'd like to get all this done before by the end of August at the very latest, oh, so okay. that in, so that beginning of September. Oh, that's fine. That answers my question. Yeah. So doesn't I, it doesn't it have something. to be today, although you know, right. obviously, I, you know, I don't know how many times the delegation is going to be able right. to meet. So I think that's just a factor. But um, second question: How many people vote on this? Whatever this. The resolution? No, the ID oh. in, in in district. So how many people vote? I assume there's a vote by, some, by this board, some board. By the governing board for the idea. To decide where the money goes. Yes. How, how many, many people are on that? How many people? So um, when we have all those work groups that I mentioned and they actually review it all, we have, I don't know, eight to ten people, five to eight, I guess, depending on which group, depends on um, the overall vote. But steering committee is 12. 12. And oh. so, and I admit, like, Memorial Hospital, I forgot Ooh. that they were also on it, too. Who, 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 how many people vote to decide where the money goes? I'm not talking about all the recommendations. The final, some final of the steering committee is 12. 12 people. Yes. And they are from where, roughly, in numbers? So, I'll just think quickly, roughly five-ish from Carroll County. Uh, Huggins Hospital, Memorial. Seven from, if I may. Yes. So, uh, seven from co ops No, and a couple from Northern Grafton as well. So, we have Cottage Hospital on there. You know, we really try to make sure we have representation from all the so five of the twelve are from Just trying to think, Jason can probably help me here. Um, there's Sue Rucker from Memorial Hospital, Huggins Hospital. We have Jason. We had Emily. There's four without me thinking too deeply. If, if I could ask that you send a list to us of that governing board, so sure. we have that. If you could, please. I'm sorry, Representative Chandler. Was there? Did you have further? No, that's like that's, that's okay. it. Representative Buko. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, welcome, Commission. Thank you. So would this show up on our budget un under uh, ProShare? Yes. The, the All line? of the money, I'm sorry, I go, apologize. Go ahead. Yeah. So my understanding, and the administrator maybe has, uh, hopefully he'll confirm what I'm about to say, is that we gave instructions to the Treasury in Concord to initiate these payments for the 2018 ProShare payment to all the counties, which had to be done legally by June 30th of this year. I think we initiated those transactions on the 27th of June. Um, uh, my understanding is that there was a single payment made to every single county. So, um, you know, what had been planned on plus the additional, I mean, it was all one one transfer, I believe is the case. Yes. And that should have been received by now. By Thursday. The it was received on Thursday. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, well, that was, part of my question was, as of March 31st, there was no zero payment from ProShare, even though we had budgeted a million. But yeah, so, but the so payments already made. Payments made at a single time by June 30th. So if we saw that up to date line now, it would say 1.5 million. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so that includes the 332 thousand dollar increase. You have that now. And your request here today is that we reinvest <coughs> half of that increase in this program. That's correct. So, uh, can. I'm not clear on just what we receive from that investment. Can you can you be clearer with, with, with we already have the increase and you're asking us to re reinvest it back into this IDM program, which I'm I'm not clear on what what we're getting for that. So um, so that money would be oh, put into Yep, yeah, no that's fine. Um, that money would be put into contracts with the IDN. And it would fund all the pro. You know, I get handed out a list yeah. of all the projects. So that money would fund those projects that are touching Carroll County, obviously. It would include Carroll County. Just the one follow up. So they're not Please. being funded with the three funded now? They are being funded partially with the state part of the program. But the program was scoped at 30 million statewide. Right now, all I've been able to put out is the 10 million of state match. So in order to put out the amount of money that everybody anticipated, including the county funds, we need this, um, we need a decision by the counties as to whether or not they're going to invest some of their funds. In this. You call that a county match? Correct. 
Yeah, yeah. In essence, that's what it is, sir. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Before yeah. I come back to Representative Marsh, a couple questions. So you need the agreement taken care of uh, ahead of the end of August, which we'll be happy to comply with. We work with a uh, nursing home subcommittee. I think this would be something we'd be passing along for them to look at. We would come out ahead of that. My question is, um, there's a little bit of uncertainty, I think, in some of the representative minds here as to where, where that money is going to go. And I'm sure our agency is wonderful and they have always done good work in the past. But I think we'd like to see, I would like to see more reassurance. So my, my question to you is this. Uh, this the, the state has given the money to the to the uh, county. I'm sure the county's locked that up, and that money's going nowhere other than its intended purpose. Uh, what if what if the county then were to come to an agreement, and let's say that agreement was at 50 percent that you were looking yeah. at, and let's say that the county then would like to process, hold on to say 25 percent of that money, turn over 75 percent of our appropriation. We get an understanding of where those monies are going or where they're going to be programmed, and that at that point in time, in some short order, once we know where things are moving, we would then appropriate our last 25%. Because I'm on the understanding that that's our money at this point in time. It, it is your money, absolutely. Yeah. So what, what is the what is the what is the issue with that? I'm looking for some accountability. Uh, I, that I understand that. I mean, again, I mean, I think what you're looking for is information that will need to be provided by the IDN Correct. in terms of how the money is is being used and so forth. In terms of what that means from a practical standpoint, if we get uh, only 75 percent of a requested increase back, then there may have to be some adjustment. Um, you know, uh, I mean, we really just have to look at that very, uh, I'd have to really kind of dig into it. And we, we might have to make some have adjustments in phasing of funding, but maybe not. It all depends on what the time, how long the time period is. I just know I personally am looking for a little more, yeah. more reassurance. I, I've been holding Representative Marsh, and then I'll mm -hmm. come to you and, and we'll move on because I sure. don't see that we're going to take yes. action. Go ahead, uh, Representative Thank you, uh, and thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Uh, I'd like to clarify a little bit what we're being asked for here because what yes. you said is we're being asked for 50% of the uh, per share uh, surplus, which would be 166000 Correct. Roughly. But what this uh, resolution says does not exceed 60%, which my understanding would be 199000 Would we be yes. asked for 166 or 199000 No, I, I put up to 60% because at the time I drafted the resolution, we didn't have the numbers finalized yet, and so I was just ballparking it. But the request, as I've made clear today, is that the county ultimately decide that it's willing to invest 50% of the increase that it received this year. Okay, thank you. Yep, which is the 166,000 and change. Thank you. Please. I would just like to make the point that we are in the middle of a, of a crisis right now in our mental health and, and the opioid crisis. And I think that this is a blessing that, we, that they have worked and, and come up with these funds that we can have to, to serve our communities. You know, we're seeing the obituaries in the paper every week of young people dying. I think that um, I would like to see that these funds go. And if, if we need to say, this is our priority and this is how we hope these agencies will do it, I think that's worth doing. But to say, that we're going to just keep this money to supplement and save our taxes. <coughs> At this point, I think our constituents want us to address the, the crisis that we're facing. And, and Representative, I'm in agreement with what you're saying, that it's accountability that we're looking for. Right, and I'm happy yeah. you know, that we have good accountability for it. But I think if we if we delay when, when we're in the middle of a crisis, yeah. it's not going to serve us. No, I'm, I'm not suggesting a delay. I'm suggesting we're going to work within <coughs> the bounds so the commissioner can adequately put his funding where it needs to be, and then we're going to be looking for this group then to tell us where that money's going and just give us some assurance. Quickly, briefly, please. Uh, we, just so you know, so you have an idea of what has been used on uh, Huggins Hospital, $166,000, uh, Memorial Hospital, $231,000, White Horse Addiction Center, $134,000, White Mountain Community Health Center, $56,000, Saco River, 2000. Carroll County, the jail would use 102,000. Or the Human Services, 384,000. Grand State Independent Living, 9,000. 9, Tri County Cap, $153,000. Those are the things that have been being funded around in, in just Carroll County. Okay, I, 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 I want to move on here. Yep. I'd be happy, I'd appreciate it. Sir, if you could just 
distribute that to uh, um, to us, and then we will take it from there. Any other further questions for the commissioner at this point? This is a comment. I just want to say that in my position as a hospital trustee for Hopkins Hospital, I am impressed by how much ID and seven has done to increase the availability of mental health services and substance abuse services in Carroll County. And, and I think there's adequate accountability there at this point in time, and I'd be fully willing to go forward with this resolution at this point. Thank you. I, there's, well, there's, there's a couple of reasons I'm not moving with the resolution. It's, it's the unavailability of getting documents ahead of time. I understand. We're that. looking at a document fresh ink, and so I think uh, I think if we were to put this on to the subcommittee, nursing home subcommittee, um, Representative Nelson, uh, as chairman, and uh, we'll, we'll take action quickly. Any further questions? Commissioner, thank I'll, you so much. Thank you Anything so much. And all I'd ask is that either through the administrator or otherwise, you just let us know when you might be scheduling a time to act so that we are aware of that. We'd be happy. And thank you. And thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Of course. Us. Happy to be here. Thank you very much. Thank you. With that, we'd like to move on to the uh, collective representative. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, right. may I have just a, a moment to, uh, I, I think it's a very important thing that should be clarified relative to what we, uh, the first item on the agenda, the uh, delegation coordinator. Just take a second. Please. Um, the, the delegation coordinator, in my opinion, is just that, the delegation coordinator. By law, uh, RSA 28-2, commission clerk is responsible for all records of the county convention. I just want it understood that the delegation coordinator is not officially responsible for any reports, uh, documentations, or whatever dealing with the county convention that is invested or vested in an ind another individual by law you cannot assume that responsibility. Thank you. And I don't think there's any, any reason. I, I appreciate the uh, clarification. Thank you, Frank. Okay, we will move on to the collective bargaining agreements. And I would like to start with the sheriffs. And um, Ms. Sheriff Sharp, would you care to have the sheriff uh, speak to that? Or do you want to speak to it? Or will we speak to it? I think we'll have the uh, sheriff speak to it at this time. Just on, if, if I could, uh, the documents have been passed along to all of the uh, representatives. I think we, we've all seen them. Um, and if we could hit the highlights of it, uh, I think that's all we're going to need to do. Um, so with that, gentlemen. Hey, sure. right, um, we have questions. We'll come back to you. Good morning. Um, I guess the basis of the contract, as you have seen in the contract, I guess you get a copy of, that it's a two-year contract versus the old one was a three-year contract, the old proposal. Um, first year is a 3% raise for both sheriff and dispatch side of it. And the second year is a 3% raise for both sides. Um, do you want to know the difference between the old proposed contract or I, I, I think uh, we had, there was a bottom line. Did you come up with what your bottom line was in the first contract compared to the second contract? If you haven't, then I think we can probably proceed. As far as wages alone? Representative McCarthy, what was the number of the... Pardon me? Representative McCarthy, there was a bottom line number that was provided. Could you elaborate on that? That you were looking for well, in the first contract? No, the, 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 the reason that the contract was not approved the first time around was the fact that we didn't have a bottom line. And that's what we, this delegation votes on, the bottom line. So now we have a new contract. They've made changes that might have been necessary, might not have been necessary. All I want to know is what was the bottom line for the original contract, which we have never been given, versus the bottom line for the new contract. You're talking about the bottom line. The total cost to the county for the contract. That's the bottom line. Right. Um, I guess with that, I would 
as it relates to the contract, we're just talking salaries and any other increases in the contract. So I guess the number for the old proposed contract on the dispatch side was $544,000. The new proposed contract would be five sixteen five. Okay. Thank you. Um, big difference is there was a $2 increment for a um, market wage increase um, for the dispatches on top of the 3% on the proposed, the old proposed one. This one is split up over two years. It's a dollar and a dollar each year. Um, and on the sheriff's side, the old proposed contract was seven seven hundred sixty-eight thousand dollars five hundred twenty-nine, and the new is seven hundred forty-one thousand dollars zero thirty. Thank you. Motion. Um, any further questions of uh, the high sheriff? And uh, recognize uh, Representative Chad. Yeah, I, I just I move that we we move to accept this. Is that what we're doing? Move, I move we accept the sheriff and the dispatch contract. It's all negotiated. Okay. Motion been made. And the expenditures related therein. Order. Okay. So second the motion. Second for discussion. Okay. Uh, Re yes, Representative. I I have a question before the motion is brought to the floor. And that is that there are places in the contract uh, okay. that are now unconstitutional, uh, things that, that can be done in both contracts, as a matter of fact. The Supreme Court recently declared that the taking of money from non-union uh, members is unconstitutional. I want to make sure that something has been done already, that not one penny is deducted from anybody's paycheck um, for the life of this contract. I think the finance, the commissioners have already handled that right. on the vote that they've taken based on the Attorney General's <coughs> ruling to the state. Yeah. Sheriff sure, sure. Yeah, If I could. Um, on the old proposed contract, the members of the union voted in the recovery cost, is what that is. Um, on this new proposed contract, they voted it back out. So it's no longer in effect as far as any non-members who don't sign up have to pay any recovery costs. There is no obligation to do that. Um, to put it in for a lifetime, I think that would be against the rules of bargaining. Um, it's totally up to the members to include that or not include that. So they voted it out. It is not in this contract. Thank you. Um, we're right, we're, we're in. I just we're want to give on. clarification, Mr. Chairman, to uh, the agency fee question and the commissioner's action that has been taken on that. To just for everyone's edification, the commissioners last week voted uh, to uh, direct that no union dues or agency fees be deducted uh, beginning with the July 6th uh, pay period. And any time thereafter, until a uh, employee opts in, the ruling was not an opt out; it's an opt in. So I can tell you that there are no agency fees or union dues being deducted until such time that uh, each individual employee opts in. So we're you. in compliance in, in accordance with what Attorney General Gordon McDonald has directed. Thank you. Any uh, further discussion by the delegation? No discussion, but the reason I brought that up is because if you look at the contract itself, Article 30B, and there is some language there that, that states that if you don't bring up a problem during the contract itself, once the, pro the contract is, is approved, that's it. You cannot change it again. So I just wanted to make sure that the... the, the uh, decision by the Supreme Court has been taken care of before we approve this contract. Okay. Thank you. Madam Coordinator, are you aware of the, of the motion? To accept the sheriff 
and dispatch contract as negotiated with the expenditures noted. Chandler, Representative Chandler, second Representative Cooler. Thank you. I'm going to go with a boys' vote unless there's an objection. So if you're in favor of the motion, acceptance of the contracts as stated, you'll signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, motion carries unanimously. Sheriff, thank you for your time. Thank uh, you. And the commissioners for the rework on that. Thank you. The uh, Administrator Chandler, uh, we'll move on now to the uh, to the second contract, our largest. And um, is there, Administrator, is there anything that you'd like to add on that? We, um, we went back to, to the table, renegotiated. Um, we're looking at a, at a, a six-month contract at this time. Uh, there are some other, uh, there's some other wordings that, that we want to uh, take care of. Uh, so we're going to go right back to the table after this, con after this vote, whether it's up or down. Uh, so the only cost item in this contract is, is a 3% increase, which comes out to about a little over $79,000. Uh, so that's what we ended up. Could you explain to me, my understanding is you had a year contract and now we're six months to take us through the last half of the year. What, what yes. period are we looking at? Uh, we're looking at, uh, well, April, but um, nothing's going to be retro. So the raises will start July 1st uh, until March 31st when we can renegotiate a new contract. I guess my question is, and it, you're, the, you're the folks, commissioners, uh, negotiate a contract, mm -hmm. um, why it's not one year's time? I just Well, you know. we were looking at that, but, but then we decided you know, t to keep it on the same schedule uh, and then come back to you before the budget of uh, 19 with another proposal. So, and then that one will be a, either a two or three year contract. Uh, was, was, there something, was there something negotiated in this part that addressed uh, times paid for the 11 paid holidays? And if I'm stepping out of my realm, I'll back away, but there were terms in there previously. Yes, no, there's, expense. there's no, there's no time and a half. Uh, the only were in, in the existing contract of Thanksgiving and Christmas. There's only two days that have always been in there. Thank you. Representative McCarthy. Yes. <clears throat> I think to the problem with this uh, a half a year contract, especially because of the delegation's um, statutory authority to, to approve or disapprove based on the bottom line, um, I, I would like to see that um, six month or whatever it is, six, seven month contract extrapolate it out so we know what the bottom line would be for this contract if it were for one full year. To be twice that then, it would be 160. Pardon? It would be 160,000. Okay. Right. Any further questions, Representative Bollock? Thank you. But you're talking about if we were to approve what you are proposing, that the uh, raises would start at the, in July, yes, and would go through the end of the year with new contract proposals coming yes. in um, at the end of the year. Yes, yeah, so we're going right back in, into negotiations. Uh, the uh, the union stewards here. Um, uh, we're going to go right back in and um, try to go for a longer contract. I mean, it's been two years since they've had a, any increase in raises and. Uh, we just wanted to nail down this contract because we brought it to you in May and we didn't have any numbers or it was too high or whatever it was. But uh, there was no vote taken. So, you know, we want to get something for our workers and then continue the cycle that it has been uh, until March 31st and April 1st. Hopefully we'll have a new contract in place by then prior to, uh, prior to the budget passing for 2019. Thank you. Representative Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, could you, uh, Article 30 mentions an effective date of July 1st, 2018, in effect until March 31st, 2019. Oh, so that should be 18. Sorry. Uh, well, we're past that. Uh, yeah, 19. Okay. 19, but, yeah. So it's nine months. Nine months. Nine months, yes. Okay. 
Sorry. Not six nine months, it would be nine months. Therein lies the confusion. So for clarification for the reporting purposes, is that $79,000 covers six months or nine months? Thank you. Nine months. Nine months. Okay. So to extrapolate a year, but it would be a, a number. Runs through the end of March? Yes. Further questions? Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Motion. Motion. So I would like to move, move the same approved contract and related expense Second. items. Second. President Chandler moves to approve the contract for the uh, Mount Washington Nursing Home, uh, seconded by uh, Representative McCarthy. Further discussion? If you're in favor of the motion as presented, uh, you're okay with that? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, then you'll signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you once again to uh, the administrator and to the commissioners uh, for working that out to uh, our satisfaction. I'd like to move on to item number nine, which is the Head Start lease for the uh, NBC annex. Yes. Uh, the the commissioners were approached by Head Start uh, of Ossipi, um, looking for uh, some space that, that, that they needed. Uh, they came in, looked at it, uh, looked at it again, looked at it again, came in, they did some analysis of what it would take to, to, uh, uh, to get that up and running by September. Um, they need new space by September. Um, and the commissioners have negotiated a contract, uh, and the next step would be to come to a delegation. Thank and you. Here we are. Um, if, if you don't mind, I think we'll, we'll run through the lease okay. and discuss a few things. I'd like to start out with, with the statement that the uh, Head Start needs new space. Um, it was my understanding when the proposal was brought to us that they no longer had space and uh, my impression, they're being told to remove from that space and that they need a new place. So I'd like clarification um, okay. that if that's indeed the case and that they no longer have that space and come September, they must be somewhere else. Um, but, but I have Nancy Martin here to answer that question. She's the one that's been negotiating the lease. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm a site supervisor for the Austin site. Um, Currently, we're um, leasing uh, Masonic Lodge. Um, our, our lease is up this year. Um, one of the challenges that we have is that um, they have breakfasts uh, every month, sometimes <coughs> twice a month, um, and we have to remove our entire um, preschool program and pack it in a corner about that size. Um, and then <laughs> Monday morning, we have to come back out and set the whole thing back up again, which is, um, it's very timely, and it's um, for uh, two Head Start teachers. It's a lot of work for us to do that many times. So we've been with, with with the commissioner's permission, delegation. Would you mind just having a seat? We'll we'll have a few sure. questions. Sure. Okay. Yes, representative. Well, referencing the chairman's question, you not you can still stay there. There's no you can re renew the lease. We the can people. we can stay Thank there. You. Yes. Um, can you give me a feel for how much space you're occupying there at the Masonic Lodge now? And, and secondly, what your historical number of student base is? Um, we um, were licensed to t uh, take 20 children, and that's as many as that we, we can have. Uh, typically, we've been full um, in all the years that we have been in the Ossipi area. Um, I am not sure the size. We need to have. It's a, we have a little 800 square feet. No, I, I, my, my point is, my, my understanding, my rough understanding of your space at the Masonic Lodge, if you were going to take in the kitchen and the bathrooms and everything, is probably in the neighborhood of a couple thousand square feet. Yes. Okay. And my understanding is that on, you know, 20 is your licensing number, but that that number has been in past years as low as 11 or 15. Some years it runs as 20. My understanding is that the space that you'll be moving into is nearly 5,000 square feet. It's a bigger, much bigger space. 
for 20, 20 people and two adults. And the, that I might further understand that the, uh, I, just, I just want to address a comment made on the Masonic uh, having uh, monthly breakfasts or so. It's, it's my understanding that they've pared that actually down to maybe four times a year now. And I can fully understand the inconvenience in moving back and forth. But I think some things have changed. And it's my further understanding that the Masonic Lodge is not of the opinion that you are not coming back to that space this year. So I just. I think there's been discussion mm -hmm. recently about that. Okay. Yeah. The, in your, your lease arrangement that you have, well, I, I, I guess I can address that with the commissioners on, on cost, so we won't need that. Um, I think that's all the questions I have for. Oh, yes, yeah. go right ahead. I just relating to the cost of the lease, and I, it, it seems to me that, I mean, I don't, I have no idea how much it's going to cost to heat, plow, maintain, mow, all the things in the lease that the county is obligated to do. I think going to cost us more than what we're collecting for money. I mean, we'd be better off to, if we're going to even do anything, just say, here you go, <laughs> you do it all, don't pay us anything. It would be a the best interest of the county, in my opinion, but uh, I, it makes no sense financially to me okay. whatsoever. And, and the I, space is and three times question, what they need. If there's, there's a question now, I'll, I'll release you to Taylor Do you have a question? Yeah, program question. Okay. Can you talk a little bit about what Head Start does and um, operational hours and that kind of thing? Operational hours. Um, the Ossipi site operates from um, well, staff may get there at 7.30 in the morning and may be there. They, they run seven hours a day, basically, staff. Um, children are there from 8.30 to 12.30, um, serving breakfast and lunch. Um, more parts of the program? Ages? Pardon me? Ages of kids? Ages are, um, we serve a population of three to five-year-olds. Um, it's an income-based program, government-funded. Um, the, we we provide um, um, health screenings, uh, social emotional development um, instruction, um, academic, um, uh, again nutritional. We provide family services. Um, we have a family worker who meets with families um, throughout the year, providing um, resources in the community if they need those. And how do kids get to the program? Um, we're recruiting 365 days a year, and um, no, I mean, in, I'm sorry, in terms of transportation, they parents transport, yeah, and so par parents transport. In in your day to day interaction with children of that age, uh, this property, I, I'm going to guess that um, of this 48, 5,000 square feet, I'm going to guess probably 2,000 square feet of it, anyways, is a commercial kitchen. Okay, so my, I guess my question is, tell me, take me through a day. What's your what's your needs for a kitchen? And do you do you need a, a? I know you have to be in a commercial facility because you're, you're you're using federal funds, but I I would tend to think that all you need. Correct me if I'm wrong. Three bay sink, uh, a, an oven that's certified, uh, refrigerator, commercial. Uh, do you do you have a need for? That full commercial kitchen could part of could your need be pared down to some small subsection of that commercial kitchen so that we could use that for something else. Absolutely, and and that has been discussed. Actually, um, would we be well, not a, we would be willing, but would it be um, part of the nursing home and, and our understanding that it could be used on weekends or when we're not using it, or at nights, or for other activities. To be the, and the security, the, the, it's my understanding, I haven't heard the proposal, but it's my understanding that the uh, House of Corrections would like to be in close proximity with uh, programming and so forth as part of one of the old wings. Uh, so I guess what, what's, your, what's your need for security, and I'm assuming that probably wouldn't be a good mix. And if I'm incorrect, I've been told incorrect. Yeah, um, but, it's just for meeting space for for the superintendent and and his staff. There's no going to be no P 
people over there, no other outside people. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Representative Chen. As an inspection, I guess I'll call it an inspection or a <coughs> study or anything been done of this building to certify that it's okay for children to be in there <laughs> without, I have no idea what's in the thing, whether it's asbestos, I don't know. But has anyone looked at it, has it passed a state or federal inspection, this new building? To certify that it's okay we we will move forward with that um, we have to follow child care licensing and certainly our own head start standards for um, providing a place for children um, that can't happen until we make the, the um, until we get, get in there and do the work for it um, our our folks have gone in there a couple of times and again and again um, and look to see what exactly needs to be done to bring that to standards if I may. yeah please the problem with that is, as I understand this, I'll be corrected, happily corrected, is that if we move ahead with the lease and then we get in there and find, I don't know, any number of things, then the county is responsible to fix it, and then once again, bringing more costs to something that the county wouldn't do if it weren't going to be made available for this type of use. So I, I can't see that that's working too well. I don't, I don't disagree with the we, we could We could put in there upon inspections and then. Well, my understanding is the lease we have before us doesn't have the ability to share. Um, I didn't see anywhere any mention in there. Uh, that's that's not in the lease at this point either. So there, there might be some other considerations. Oh, yeah, so if, if I could ask, so you, you, you've had a home with the, with the Mason's Lodge. Uh, for some time uh, for 2,000 square feet. Is your lease uh, at 2,000 square feet comparable to our lease at 5,000 square feet? I am not familiar with a lease of the Masons, um, and I can defer to my assistant director, Karen. Thank you. When we um, brought this forward, I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head what the, um, I know it's in the ballpark um, of what we're looking at when we're looking at moving our facility to another um, facility. Um, the issue with moving our um, facility here was it was larger than what we really needed. We didn't, we spoke to them about that. We didn't really need all of the space. So it wasn't, the classroom size, the dining room area is would be wonderful and the use of the kitchen, but it was much larger than what we wanted to lease and so that was um, an issue for us because we really couldn't afford, because we are a nonprofit um, community um, service agency, that we couldn't afford the whole space. So that's why we entered into a discussion of, you know, we would be willing to um, share that kitchen space. And we do that with some of our, our other programs already, like in Plymouth, we're in the um, Plymouth Hole Village, and we share the kitchen space with other programs that are in there. So we would be, um, you know, willing to do that. Um, I, I just, yeah, Representative Schmidt. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to follow up on Representative Ch Chandler's discussion here, uh, given the age of the building, I, I think it makes a lot of sense that certainly the county ought to go forward at the moment with an environmental assessment of the building. That is, is there a lead paint issue? Are those tiles asbestos? Probably. Uh, is there a mold issue? Uh, is there a rodent issue? There's a lot of issues here, and I think that it that threshold should be explored before you consider signing a lease. That's just my two cents worth. First answer is please. Well, uh, I just, I do see in the lease, it does say that the tenant shall at its sole cost and expense obtain and maintain any of the permits licensing, and I'm sure make sure that, that the building is appropriate. But having run an early childhood program in a shared space, it, it's extremely, exceedingly difficult. And, Young children at this age, they, they learn mostly in learning centers and there, there's a lot of equipment and materials that need to be spread around and it's very difficult. To, we happened to run the children's center in the Legion Hall for the first several months when we started it. And it was very, very difficult um, because there are a lot of, there's a lot of equipment for these other groups that's not appropriate for the children. Ours was an issue with bingo chips and things. but. Um, 
if they can have a space that's appropriate for them that can be set up for them so they can properly build in, because you need to stabilize shelving, is, is one simple example. And you're making your learning centers, and you, you can't nail them down if you have to move them out for meetings you know, several times a month or other activities. So they're, they're, it is difficult for them to do that. So if this space would work for them, and if they can take, use an appropriate amount of it, um, I think it would be beneficial for the children in the, in the county. Thank you. Thank you for that. Representative Nelson. Right. Thank you. How does transportation for the current people who use your program, because we're a long distance from the Masonic Lodge to here, I mean, would they be happy to come this much further to use the facility? Um, we did look at that, um, and last year I measured the difference between the families that were using this the program last last year um, to have what the difference was, and it was a matter of five miles for those. I think the largest was five miles. We serve anywhere from Sanborn to um, Tamworth, um, Effingham, and Ossipee. Um, the Masonic Temple is is uh, is kind of out there. Um, there's nothing else there. In fact, you can't you know, find it. Um, whereas here, they're at the hub where folks are coming anyway. They're coming here to do their, their grocery shopping and they're picking up their chicken feed and they're, you know, they're coming into this area. So it actually is a better area for folks to be coming to um, than to be going out 25 as far as transportation goes. Thank you. Uh, Representative McCarthy. Uh, the, uh, the, the cost uh, would be a thousand dollars a month. Is that is that correct? Is that what the, is it in the contract? I think it's mm -hmm. twelve. Is it twelve hundred? No, it's a thousand. Oh, is it? No, no, it's a thousand. Okay. Yeah. Thousand dollars a month. Now, right. and that includes yes. all um, services: uh, heat, electric, garbage disposal, all of it. Everything is included. Plus a, a, a commercial kitchen and five thousand square feet of of, of ground. Um, that, that, that's fine. I'm not quabbling with the pricing. However, we've been told on numerous occasions by the county commissioners in the past that in order to keep that building heated, stop it from freezing, do this, do that, keep the building in a decent condition, it costs between forty and fifty thousand dollars a year, and yet we're going to release it out for a thousand dollars a month and give them all of the freebies. I don't understand. And I also like the, uh, this question: Does RSA 28 colon 8C commit to play? And that is to transfer an interest through sale or lease of real property owned by a county. It shall be accomplished by competitive bidding, and shall be approved by the majority vote of not only the county convention but the county executive committee as well. Does that come into play? Was it put out for lease? Bid. No? Okay. Thank you. Would you believe? Thank you. Um, I, um, I, I, I believe the rest of my questions um, are really directed towards uh, the administrator and the commissioners at this point. You're welcome to stay. So, to uh, the administrator. So, Oh, actually, I'll ask you a question. What what temperature do you like to have for the children during the winter? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know I know what my wife makes me keep the house at, and what I'm comfortable with. So. I'm sorry. Say so what what would the temperature be? The temperature. It has to be 65. Okay. Uh, for licensing, um, a little above that. Um, most of our classrooms are around 68 to 70. Okay. Um, so, but it has to be 65 for licensing. Okay. I, yeah. I, 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 Yes. Do you have to use the whole thing? Is there a way to just use a section of it? Yeah, they, they are. They're just using the dining room and, and, and the kitchen. Everything else is blocked off to the to the old. Part so of they're the not. Room. You're not renting five hundred, five thousand square feet. We're yeah. certainly not using that. We're not no. using that amount of space. And that was one of the statements that we said when we went in. It said this is much more than we can use. But um, if I can just add one piece, I don't think has been brought up. Um, is one of the um, reasons we really liked this space 
um, was because of a relationship that we would like to form with the nur current nursing home and understanding that the generational relationships um, are really important for kids and for the elderly. Um, we would put a playground out where the folks here can watch children play. Um, our lead teacher has had a dream to bring um, children over to the nursing home for programs on a regular basis and or have them come and visit there. So that's a, another piece of why we sought that area out, understanding that it is bigger, um, but it was an opportunity. Thank you. The goal is wonderful, and I agree with what you're saying on that okay. part. Uh, for, for Representative Nelson, before we go to the commissioners. One additional question, Commissioner. Considering the neighbors, direct neighbors to this facility that live there, I don't know how many live there, 30, 40, whatever, um, is there any concern for security um, since sometimes they do work in that area, shoveling, that type of thing? Mm -hmm. um, we have talked about that. Um, we've also talked about uh, things that happen daily in areas that are not secure. Um, currently, anybody could drive into the Masons and walk in there. Um, I also am the site supervisor for the Conway site uh, on Main Street. Anybody can walk into that building um, at any time. Um, folks that are in the correctional facility are basically receiving, receiving many of the same services that our family workers and our program provides for the families that we work with. Um, it's educational, nutritional, mental health, all of those services and resources that we're providing. So um, we're depending on the security and the work of the folks that are working with that population. Thank you. Then we'll get some more okay. questions. Uh, I just have, have you, in talking about the partnership with the nursing home, which I think is, is wonderful for both sides, have you thought or is it would it be potentially a, a possibility to maybe do the meals through the nursing home so that you don't have to get into that large kitchen and just have to do your snacks locally and have to do your meals through the kitchen of the nursing home? And just that would mean transporting the food to across? I don't know. I would, it was just a thought I had yeah. that might reduce the demand because Kitchen. We have contacted our services before with schools and. Um, well, that's what I know. It just wasn't really cost effective. It wasn't cost effective. I don't know. It was just yeah. just a thought yeah. that would reduce the amount of space you would require and the demand. And, and part of our program is is a nutritional program where um, every site has a cook, and part of their part of their program is to actually work with children and families um, in some of the meal preparation. So it's kind of programish yes. as well. Thank you, and wonderful suggestion. They um, perhaps, uh, perhaps through the commissioners, you could, you could show us what your need requirements are for a kitchen. There must be some spec standard. And if we could find out what that is, I'd appreciate it. And my my questions now are for the commissioners, if I could. My my understanding is that the that the lease um, is at say twenty cents a square foot that we're heating the space and that we're doing all repairs and so forth and that they are paying um, they are going to uh, pay for the upgrades inside and hopefully during that upgrade process we don't encounter mold rodents or any other things that could be in a building of that age i notice that the brick needs pointing and, and other things um, what what temperature, my understanding is that we have the building basically in mothball conditions. We keep it warm enough so that we don't experience any problems. Bob and his crew do a wonderful job, drain water where necessary and so forth. So I guess my question for you as the administrator is what's it going to cost for us to take that space for somewhere in the 50 degree temperature and then rise it up to 65 on a regular basis and then I'm sure the kiddos like a comfortable um, condition in, in the spring uh, and fall, which can be cold. What, what, what did you come up with numbers for what it was going to cost you to do that? What would we maintain the, the, the building at now? During the uh, heating season, we maintain the building at 50 degrees. A what? 50. Okay. So um, the electric and propane is about 20,000 in, in that building combined. Um, so 
So you know, we figured twelve thousand. That's that's more than half the cost of of subsidizing the the propane and the electricity. Um, I'm sorry, you figured it was? Did you run a calculation of some, some means to come up with what that cost was going to be? We're going to run, uh, no, how, how we are we going to get hot water over to them? Because my understanding is we don't have separate hot water over there. We have hot water separate. We do for the boiler system, but we also have separate hot water for the, for the kitchen, uh, excuse me, for the laundry. So is, what's, what's the cost going to be to, to upgrade to get them to where they need to be? Well, they'd have to put an electric hot water heater in it. Um, if, is there a hot water heater in the kitchen? Not separate, no. As you know, we went to, a, uh, to an ozone system in the laundry area. Mm -hmm. So they'd have to put a hot water heater in um, at their cost. Um, and we've already talked about that. There's no calculus, there's no calculations uh, in, in with this lease. They, they came in with $1,000, they presented it to the commissioners, and the, the commissioners were happy with it. My, my yeah, and, and there's no meters on anything, so I don't know how we would calculate the cost. Well, the, the taxpayers are going to calculate the cost, because at the end of the year we're going to have, we're going to have higher fees to do that. So I guess my, my understanding is that their base lease where they are presently could be as much as 50% higher than what's offered right now. And 20 cents a square foot is for a space that uh, you, you could argue that the space is so large that, you know, you've reduced your price to where it is. But in commercial space that I'm aware of, where tenants take care of their heat and everything inside, because heat's a big variable, or air conditioning, that probably the least I see in our area is a dollar a square foot. So, um, and... You know, I, I think those people, correct me if I'm wrong, they you are correct. So that's, that's, that's where I'm seeing it not only in uh, restaurant operations, uh, but other commercial space. And of course, I think in, in the state, Gene, we would see in the $22 a square foot, you know, if we were dealing with the state leases for office space and so on. So I, I guess my question is to the commissioners. Uh, it, it would appear that there's no forethought in what that number should be, and that a thousand seem to be the right number. Are the commissioners still comfortable with what they're offering to the delegation for a lease? There's no reflection on on the use of these people. Yes. I, I, I'm not speaking for the commissioners. I'm speaking as a commissioner. Uh, I'm comfortable that this is a, an appropriate lease in term. Uh, and I understand exactly what you're saying, that, uh, that the dollars are short. And uh, I think in large part they are uh, intended to be. Uh, they're intended to make it cost affordable to a program that uh, needs all the help it can get. And, uh, these, uh, these programs are often not, uh, I, I won't say appreciated, but I, 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 people aren't aware necessarily of what Head Start does. And I happen to be of the mind that uh, early childhood intervention in educational settings, good ones like a Head Start, uh, curb a lot of uh, problems that we might have later on in, in a child's life. Education is a great uh, equalizer in many instances. Uh, my look at it was $12,000 would cover the cost. There wouldn't be a dime to make on it. I'm not of the mind that we should look to to make revenue, uh, generate uh, profit, if you will, uh, from a program such as Head Start. Now, if this was something else, I would look at it totally different. Uh, you know, twelve thousand. If it's, you know, if it doesn't cover the cost, then maybe that should go up. I, you know, I, I can't argue that it may need to be more to cover cost. Uh, but I was satisfied that, given the building, given the circumstances of the infrastructure inside the HVAC, the, uh, the the little cost that's really going to be incurred by uh, clearing the sidewalks a little bit better than we do anyway. Uh, you know, a lot of these maintenance things we're doing anyway. So the 12,000, uh, again, I'm of the mind that that would cover whatever cost the county would have. Could be wrong, that's why we have, you know, the delegation to, to take that look at it as well. I believe it's a great program, a needed program. 
and uh, from what I was told and what I understood that they need a place and we have an empty place and it just seems to make sense. I say that knowing that the process is that once we, the commissioners have a position, we bring it to the delegation and we're respectful to the delegations that work necessary to the funding side of it. Uh, my look, such as it was, I think $12,000 covers costs. We won't make a penny. Uh, maybe that's low. I don't, I don't really know. I, I'm listening to your comments, and you, you make some valid points. Thank you. And I, and I agree wholeheartedly with your position, the need for the program, the development of children, and having them in a safe place to learn. Totally agree with the mission. But I believe it has been brought to us, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, that there was a need for a place to go. It is my understanding that they have a place that they're at. I'm always a concern with a leap to judgment. It's my understanding that they have their things in storage. I listen to the concerns of the representative and what we've heard in the past of black mold having to shut a building down, we did put a roof on it knowing we have leaks, the question of asbestos. I think a needs assessment on what it is we have would be valuable as can be. I'm, I'm, and I'm willing to listen to others, I'm not willing to move forward with this lease as presented because there's not contingencies on cohabitable space or assurances of, uh, of costs. Um, it would be my suggestion that uh, we follow up or that you follow up with an assessment of what's really there in that space, uh, find out what their building schedule is for what they're willing to put into it. Maybe they could live with a much smaller space. I think the representative brought up a good point about a kitchen uh, being shared or a smaller facility for their purpose. The Lands Advisory Council has been working for a year plus, hoping to put something together. I applaud the commissioners for trying to do something to help children. Uh, but I don't feel it's in the best interest of, uh, of the taxpayers at this point in time, and I'm willing to listen to other delegation members, uh, but I'm not willing to bring the lease forward at this time. Is there further discussion? Representative Kamau, talking to you. I share your concern mostly with the, uh, the condition of the building, and before any lease is signed, this delegation needs to do the due diligence needed and go through the building and tour it. I don't know how many people have been inside the building recently you need to take a tour before you walk around the vehicle before you buy it. Thank you. Representative McCarthy, do you have a hand up? <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Mountain View Nursing Home Annex, just in the first quarter of this year, electric $2,300, propane $3,698, total almost $7,000 in cost to the county just for the first three months of the year. That's $28,000 for the year at a minimum. And we're going to lease it out for $1,000 a month. Thank you, Representative, Representative Butler. I'll come back to Representative Martin. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, whether or not the program needs to move, I don't think is um, a critical piece of uh, uh, our decision. Um, they are requesting to move, and if it seems reasonable uh, fiscally in terms of taxpayers um, and safe uh, and sensible, then I would support the move. Um, but I think you've raised several good questions um, and relative to the uh, uh, viability of the space, I think that's a decision that we need to make. In terms of the $28,000, um, we would reduce uh, the cost of the taxpayers by 12000 if this uh, lease went through, um, that certainly would be better than nothing at all. Thank you, Representative Abelain. No, oh, oh, Representative Marsh, I apologize. Uh, you were. Yes, a couple things. First of all, I, I appreciate uh, what the commissioners have said, that they priced this lease at the marginal cost of the space, and, and uh, supporting a program that is really good for the children of this county is a wonderful thing. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm hearing some questions as to whether there's asbestos in the space. And I believe that if we allow a children's program into this space for even a short amount of time, until we answer that question, potentially is creating a massive future liability for the county, and we simply cannot afford to do that. That question needs to be answered before anything uh, happens as far as this lease is concerned. Thank you, Representative Chandler. 
Yeah. Well, I, just to follow up briefly, quickly on uh, Representative Como's suggestion that people toured the building, that's fine, but I, in no disrespect to any of our members, but I don't think the tour is fine for us to look at it, but it, 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 we're not experts on finding what is in there. I mean, at, at some point, before we ever let children use the facility, it, it, and it, that's probably going to cost some money, and we may not want to even invest that ahead of time. Uh, we need to find out how much it costs, but I really think we need some kind of a expert to, to certify with mold, rodents, dust, anything, I guess. So that's that's following up on what you said. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's a problem. Schmidt. No, I agree. What I said earlier, the environmental assessment is, is absolutely critical. And uh, yeah, I think that assessment should do two things. It's, uh, I think the county should undertake it because the building is there. And I think you can do that for two or three thousand. And I know that from experience because I was director of environmental affairs for a large corporation. But what you really want to find out, if, if there is an issue, uh, what are the abatement costs involved? So. That's what you need to know. Uh, building that age, as I said earlier, does it have lead paint? I, I bet you it does. So that's an issue with children. Uh, the asbestos is an issue. Uh, is there a mold issue? And if so, I mean, but you know, again, it's a liability issue. It's not a question of is it a good idea. If the space is good, by all means. But before you do anything, I think that environmental assessment is absolutely critical. I think it'd be crazy to go ahead without doing that. Representative Nelson, did you have a point? Thank you. Yes, I did. Two questions. One, what happens if all of a sudden there's a disaster and that has to, can't use it anymore? What happens then? I mean, landlords, I think, sometimes have to pay for somebody to be relocated to go in the house. What happens with the business situation? I have no idea. There's, in my understanding, the lease has termination, uh, whether they want to get out of it or whether we want to get out of it. But for that moment that there is that unforeseen, that act of God, I don't know that answer. And my second one is, is there anything in here that I see that they can use it for other purposes? In other words, if they wanted to have for the parents night classes for cooking or something, will they be able to do that? It's their space, I don't, I don't see why not. Thank you. Any further questions? I just, yes, Representative. I just haven't heard, uh, aside from the uh, asbestos and the roads, you have a case of, you have an increase in general liability. How do we address that, and what's the, going to be the cost of insuring that? Uh, certainly, as a landlord hosting a program of three to five year olds, going to have require additional care above, you know, normal liability. No, we have an umbrella liability for the building. They would have their own insurance that would name us as additional insurer. Okay. Any further questions? I, I agree. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Which Rep. one? Representative McCarthy, go right ahead, sir. I, I agree with Representative Butler. Um, $12,000 is better than nothing. But this is, a, I believe, a five year lease. And what happens if next year or six months from now, a company comes in and says, yes, we'd like to lease that, because it wasn't put out for bids. We'd like to lease that. We'll give you 5000 What are we taking for a loss then? Point taken. Representative, come on. Yes, it's my understanding that the uh, House of Corrections wants to use some of the space for um, either treatment areas or office areas. I was office. office. Office areas. Office areas. Only office uh, for for meeting spaces. There would be no no inmates in there, no clients, nothing. Okay. Just our staff. Thank you, sir. Would you? Yes. Would you accept the motion to table this item? I I would accept the motion. Okay. Motion's made to table. Second. And seconded. If you're in favor of the motion, you signify by saying aye. 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 If you're opposed, nay. No. Um, with, with one dissent. Thank you. We will move on to the next item. Oh, I'm sorry. Sheriff? Did you have questions? No, I was on that. Okay. Thank you. Um, next item is the uh, first quarter budget review. Yeah. Second quarter, first quarter. If you would lead us through that, please. Starting with expenditures. Okay. Um, you'll notice that uh, some of the uh, 
the commissioner's salaries are at um, sorry. Yeah, the commissioner's salaries are at 26, one percent over. Uh, so the treasurer's at 20, 26 percent. All the elected official salaries are at 26 because when we switch from our um, from our own payroll to the uh, to the payroll system, uh, instead of our in January, instead of the two bi-weekly, we got one weekly check, check in there too, so it'll be three payments in January, because now we're on a weekly basis as opposed to a bi-weekly basis. Um, so you'll notice that in, in, the, uh, in the elected officials. Uh, Representative Avalon, why would we go from two weeks to one week? Because the, the commissioners thought that'd be a good idea to help our LNAs, who sometimes can't go to two weeks um, and we had the option of doing a two week or a one week and so the commissioners went to a one week that, that helped some of our staff. Well, um, the, uh, did this impact any other people other than employees? Employees? No, just, just employees. And did it affect any elected officials pay? Yes, all of them. How? Did they get extra one extra week of pay. How would, if an elected official gets their stipend yearly from uh -huh. January 1st to December 31st, was any money encumbered from last year's budget to this year's budget to cover that? We don't encumber money for, uh, for bringing payroll. It's due on a payroll cycle and on a payroll and a pay period. Um, so we've always done it the way I've done it since, since I got here. Um, our auditors, uh, do do a do a change in the in the uh, in, in the financial statement somewhere, but we would not encumber any money for the following year for any payroll. Um, please, what, Mr. Chairman, just please run with it. Um, the um, fair labor standards calls for um, an exemption for elected officials' pay, and since it's state mandated that we have and set the elected officials pay is to be paid mm -hmm. within the year that it is uh, allotted. Okay, so, so did you reduce last year's budget item for elected officials pay? No, they got the same as they always did. So it's just going to be the same bottom line on each budget? For the elected officials, yes. And they've been paid for 17 and going forward in 18 is going to maintain the same? That I don't know. You'll, yeah. Yeah. It, it should, I mean, Nothing's ever changed, so I don't. Well, you're, I don't you're carrying over two weeks from last year, which, which right. was convenient for us because it ended on the 31st of the year. But, but, but we've carried over two weeks every year. The, for employees, that's fine. But for elected officials, their pay is based on the yearly December, to the end, year end December 31st. They don't have the ability to carry over their pay unless you encumber funds from the previous year for that elected official's pay. No, it was never done before. It wasn't done last year. It's not it's, done this year. That's how it's supposed to be done. Okay, well. So I just want to make sure that the, the elected officials are getting their correct pay, just like we do. Mm -hmm. We get paid our hundred dollars for the two years. We, we could change the way we pay them if you'd like, or I mean, I'm open to anything. I just want to make sure that they're paid their correct amounts, because mm -hmm. that way there's no problem. Because technically they are not employees. So well, when so let me answer this. So so sure. so when someone leaves after their their cycle, mm -hmm. they they don't get those last two weeks, or we. Pay them up front, or how do we? You pay them according to the DOL labor standards laws. Okay. Which is seven days after their separation, or 72 hours after termination. Or within the next payroll cycle. Within the next pay period, you right. if they separated on their own, but if they're terminated, it's usually within 72 hours of termination. So would this be considered termination? No, they can pay their right. own. Right, well, so then it would, it, so then it would just carry over. It wouldn't, for elected officials, it doesn't carry over. They're paid, they're paid their stipend within the year that they recruited, not carried over into the proceeding, from a preceding year or to a following year. Just to make sure they're all, we get that situated. Yeah. Because this, we, this is the first time it's ever come up, so. Have, have there, if I could interrupt you. Sure. Have elected <laughs> officials been told that they've been paid too much for this pay period yes. and we're yes. going to start cutting their pay back? Yes. And were they consulted ahead of that decision? No. Once we found out, we, we, we made the correction right away and, and notified them right away. So. 
it, it would appear that uh, that the elected officials have not been treated properly, and that would be my hope that you would make every effort to speak with the same people at the Division Department of Labor, mm -hmm. and to see that that's that's corrected in as, as quick a manner as, as possible. And then then I guess I ask the question: At what point do do you, as an administrator, without an HR department? How that's affecting these sort of these sort of decisions. And well, they're my, my understanding that you've internalized the HR department, mm -hmm. and and our our funds there moving back and forth. Uh, and do you feel that the that the, our community of employees are being, and even elected officials are being uh, treated properly without having that? Uh, because it would be my understanding going forward, uh, I'd like to be reassured, and I'm not reassured at this point in time, that number one, uh, the financial, um, financial uh, accountability of our county is being done in a timely manner, and I, I have concerns without an HR department um, that our employees are receiving all that they should. I can assure you the nursing home has never had better representation than they have now. When you have two people sitting over here from HR that have no input into the, into the department that's our biggest uh, employer, um, by, by, by us putting someone in there, now, now we're able to handle any situation at any moment, and they know what's going on. It's hard to manage. Uh, 300 employees from, from across the street. I mean, that was ridiculous. Um, I think we have a better HR system now. I think, I think our finances are doing very well. Um, we, you know, we did lose a person in the office, as you know, um, and it's taken a toll, and it will continue to take a toll because we're, we're down a person. You're asking our people to work twice as hard, twice as long for the same amount of money, and... Um, I, I, just, I just want to say, and I, I won't go back I, I'm not asking them to do that. Uh, something we have you, were, you, were, you were brought to this position, mm -hmm. uh, the administrator, and we brought in a uh, finance director because we thought the task was overwhelming for the commissioners. Mm -hmm. And it was at least my opinion that I thought the commissioners were elected to be policy people, mm -hmm. as we are policy people. But during the course of time, we've lost an HR person. We've, we have shifted positions and responsibilities um, in the, um, in the uh, financial side. And I don't feel comfortable that we don't have, um, that we're without some of, those, some of those pieces. And it will be my recommendation if I'm still here next year and I'm a voting member of the delegation that we're going to need to reestablish those positions so that we can start getting uh, reports in a timely manner. To say that by not hiring a person who receives customers and answers phones as being the key member that is holding us up for any financial statement every report is always weeks late. It would seem to me that we're putting a lot of responsibility on, uh, on a, what I believe was, was a receptionist position. So I, I don't accept that. I apologize for running on. I do apologize. You and the rest of the department do a wonderful job. I certainly feel you are overwhelmed as that department is. I'm sorry, Representative Evelyn, I'll go back to your question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The elected official salary needs to be paid within the calendar year, according to Fair Labor Standards, Section 203, which defines what an employee and an elected official is. Also has IRS code um, as well, um, Section 1402, addressing the app applicability of officials' pay. Um, I want to make sure that we're in compliance with all those as well, so we're not subject to any further DOL investigations. Sure, I'll, thank you. I'll be glad to check into it for you. Thank you, and to make sure that any, any withholdings or any mistakes that were made from the previous year are rectified in 17 and 18. 
So 18, 17 seems to be the year that's the problem that's of the rollover from a full year, end of year salary into the first week of um, January. Because as it relates to, as it relates to employees, employees get, get taxed with that number the day that the funds become available to them, which would have been January, which means the rollover <coughs> happened in January. So I can understand that yeah. I can understand the problem between understanding that between a regular person, an employee, and then having an elected official salary that should have been encumbered from the previous year to cover that entire um, balance because it is in state law. Just to make sure that everybody's clear on that. Thank you. I'm going to recognize the uh, red shirt and red shirt, Lisa. I believe that for the elected officials, it goes back to when the elected official was elected. Because at that point in time, they, the first year they came in, uh, the elected officials' first checks, or the, the prior elected officials' checks, were paid in that first year. And so it would go back to um, whenever the commissioners were first deemed a commissioner, elected commissioner, or the sheriff was first elected a uh, sheriff, and when I was first elected deeds, and at the time the uh, business office said that that would be made up at the end when you do retire, which it would if it were still in the two-week pay period time uh, management system. But now that we've moved to the one-week management system, that is being taken away. Frank, that's going to Oh, I'm sorry, Frank. Uh, uh, sorry, Rip Yes, Mr. Chairman, may I address the register? Please. Uh, your salary when you were first elected was uh, a fifty thousand dollar annual salary. Is that correct? That's correct. How much did you actually receive on that first year? Forty-seven thousand six hundred and some dollars. The the difference was to be made up at the end when I made it, which would happen if we were still on the biweekly system when I leave, but we will not. Be. Representative Actually, it would be uh, the day if you're a new elected official, it would become effective the day that you are sworn into your position. The old elected official would maintain that pay up until that point. So but when you that's roll over, not what happened. Right, so when you roll over into your new position, you would start from the day that you're elected, not elected, but your day that you're sworn in forward. So for 17, if you're new in 17, you would have a partial year in 17, but you would have a full year in 18. You just want to make sure that, you know, whatever the difference was in 17, for the new elected officials carries through to 18 as well. Our, Matt Merch, are, are you of the opinion that that did happen or didn't happen? What the representative spoke of. The business office has a, had, uh, I believe the finance office has a different way of managing the payroll. Then it doesn't comply with the way the delegation has approve the budget for the day one of the term. I'm talking different calendar years. I was elected on January 7th to start January 7th, 2015. So there were two days in that January of 2015 that I did not function in that office. Um, and, and yet the difference between the 50,000 and the 46 47,000 uh, was the two weeks prior in 2014 plus the two days in 2015. It's a different way of looking at when to pay the bills. But I believe what you've proven is that the salaries are from the day of the term mm -hmm. and can be paid however, once a year, whatever, it's as long as it's that for that term versus for the administrative office's pay cycle. Please. What was your, since you were elected in 15, and it would have been a partial year, in 16, what was your W-2? Just under 50,000 by pennies. Okay. It was correct. Mm -hmm. And the same last year. Yeah. This year it will not be. If, if you look around the projections out because of the uh, numbers, it will be shy. It will be, well, I have the numbers here. So what was your uh, 2017 W-2? Just under, pennies under 50,000. Because it included two weeks in 2016. Which it shouldn't. Which it shouldn't. Which it shouldn't. But it did. Because you shy the first term. 
five right. to two weeks. Representative Chandler? Well, just with all due respect to everybody, our job is to appropriate the money. It's their job to figure out how to spend it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I you know, know. I, I, and no, and I so, totally appreciate so. that, but there, well, there, there, is, there, is an, uh, there is an issue with elected officials and the amount of pay they're being paid. Right. And they're not able to resolve it, so we're sitting here at a table. It's, it's all the elected officials. Mine mm -hmm. is easy because it's 50,000. It's up to us to I, resolve. I, 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 them to resolve. I, I fully understand. <laughs> it's our hope that they will resolve it. Representative Nelson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Can we just check what another county they, does and find out how we, they handle we, all this? We, we've already checked. Okay. We shouldn't have to, and it shouldn't be our job. And I, and I agree with Representative Chandler. Uh, may I suggest that Representative Chandler is right, it's not our job to figure out this problem, but it is our job to make sure that the problem has been figured out. So therefore, what I would suggest, and I'll make this as a motion if it's appropriate, that we ask the commissioners to look into this matter and report back to us the next time. That I, they I, I think we can do it without a motion. I think they're perfectly understanding to do that. <coughs> okay, let's, let's, move, let's move on to the discussion at this point. Um, look at what the bottom line. Everything's everything's looking pretty good. Um, could I? Could, so you're, you're proposing we just we just go to the bottom line. The bottom line. No, I, I'm just saying it, everything's looking everything's looking where it should be. I mean, it, I don't see anything that's really that really jumps out at me. Yes, Representative. How is the, um, we have the registered deeds. How is that, how is that trending this year? It looks pretty healthy. Uh, not as healthy as we'd like it, but. <laughs> um, could, could, could we have a bit of a discussion? My, under, my understanding is, and I, I have the uh, pleasure of turning on the commissioner's delegation in the meeting while I'm working so I can keep informed with the good work that the commissioners are doing. It's, it's, my, it's my understanding that uh, contracts, uh, and maybe I'm wrong, contract to repave this parking lot, which is in horrible shape, has been withheld because there were concerns of whether you were in revenue projections and whether you were going to meet your goals so that you may have held back on one or two contract, but it's my understanding from looking at the revenue projection from from the registry, which was my old department I used to watch after, um, that they are trending higher, and I six percent at least higher, and that's that's during the uh, what typically is the slow part of the year. So, I guess I'd like to know why you're saying uh, other projections still have you concerned. Well, she's fifty-six thousand six hundred ninety-six dollars below the six-month mark where she should be. So, if you take that and um, she should be at 484 750 at the half a year. She's at 428054 So that means she's going to have to get $90,241 for the next six months to make her projections. And have you ever done that, $90,000 for the next six months? I don't know. I'm just if I, I could go to the registrar and then I'll go back to the registrar and the line, please. As, as you suggested, the, um, the revenue projections are January, February, March, April, those are very slow months of the year. Traditionally, <coughs> the larger income for the registry is in the latter half of the year. So for us being up 6% at this point in time, to me, seems uh, I'm comfortable with that. Of course, I have no blue, no glass ball to tell what the latter half of the year will bring, but traditionally, the latter half is much better than the first half. And at this point in time, we are up for the year to 6% for the full year, cumulatively. And uh, last month, we did very well. As of Friday, we, we made more money in June of 2018 than we did in June of 2007, which was the peak of the market. So the trend holds. We should make budget. So I don't have a thank, thank you for that. And I just uh, ripped about one. Um, we, only, we only have a three month thing in front of us. Okay. Oh, sorry. Do we have a, do we have six month? Yeah, end of, yeah. End, I'm sorry, six month, end of second quarter? Yeah, I think I had, um, I passed, I sent an email, but. Um, are they right there? 
My understanding, Madam Registrar, is that you you put in a conservative forecast for the year, and I uh, have traditionally asked to raise that forecast, and I believe even Representative Chandler had talked about shouldn't our forecast be at least as high as it was the year before. So in what you're tracking, or what you are able to track, because I'm going to address that a little further right now, uh, are you meeting your projection of, what, of where you were supposed to be at, at five months or six months? We are. Um, the, the formula that we use for the revenue projection has been consistent for years and years and years, and it's used by the register statewide. You take the first nine months of the year, which are the slowest, and the first three months are the slowest, but first nine months, and you divide that by nine, you get a one ninth, and you times it by 12. So you've got the, the least busy nine months projected out for a full year. But but we did up it by sixty thousand. That's because we doubled the price of copies. We upped it by the price of copies so that we would then have funds. And when did you change that price? We changed that. We talked about it at the delegation meeting in early January. It, I gave two weeks notice. It went into effect, I believe, on the twenty first of January. Okay. Again, the busiest time of year is coming. Thank you, thank you. Uh, let me ask you one more thing while I have you here, and then I get to go Representative Marshall I'm holding. Um, it was my understanding a couple of years ago that this delegation approved an uh, amount of money to increase our, our record keeping, whether it was an Excel program or some module that we added that would allow you as a uh, director, uh, you as a registrar, to have daily daily input to know what your expenses were going out and how much income was coming in. It is my understanding that you're not getting those reports and you are not alone in having that issue. That other, at least elected officials I know, are having to take time to carry your own set of books to reconcile what's going in, what's going out, to have that reassurance of where your department is. Am I wrong in that assumption? Well, I'm really not sure what... Well, I, I don't actually to address that point. I'm talking about the extra work put on you to try and keep track of because you're not able to get out of the business office in a timely manner what your revenue or your expenses are. When I, when I came on board, I created an Excel spreadsheet to track all the different kinds of revenue that we track and we use it and the staff are great at it and at the end of the day we have the numbers which is but it would appear that there's a disconnect in how in that you have to do that function to get your information thank you all right should we continue on representative march to Joe? yes i'd like to point out that when you have revenue that varies on a seasonal basis it's inherently hard to project it's much worse at the hospital than it is here 
the way we dealt with this at the hospital, so that we didn't have discussions like the ones we just had, is we added a prior year to date column to our spreadsheets so we can compare how we were doing last year to how we were doing this year, and then it would be obvious to everyone whether we were doing it really well or not, and we wouldn't have to have such discussions. Thank you. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's obvious to me if you look at this chart, you know, you look at, you look at what we, uh, 190,000 that's come in so far, and you look at this chart, it's about normal where it should be. I'm just going out there. If it, if it does, I hope so. I hope it does. Thank you. Do you want to continue on that, or are there questions from the uh, delegation on the expenses to date? Rep well, uh, Representative. I took a lot of time to go through this myself at home, and I'd just like to bring out the things that I found. Um, I, everything was fine until I got the, uh, uh, the uh, county attorney. Uh, I think you're going to have to look at uh, for next year, the postage, you use 64% of it already in the first quarter of this year. Um, it's a very small amount, but still, that might take an adjustment to that line item. Well, uh, sir, sometimes everyone buys it up front, so, you know, it may last them half a year, three yeah, quarters of a year. Well, let's just take a look at it. That's all. Yep, I'm okay. not saying there's something wrong. Take a look at it. Right. Dispatch line 69, 75% used in the first quarter. Is the sheriff still here? Is dispatch anybody from dispatch? 69. Yes, that's what I got. Radio communication. Um, it, it's an upfront. Uh, we buy a. Um, uh, it's all his licensing and upfront. Okay. Like, that's what I figured. Exactly what it is. House of Corrections, line 65, and 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 other other departments have had the same problem. It looks like to me. Propane, is, it, it, the cost of propane for the first quarter is up substantially. Um, we used a lot this year, yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Okay, uh, capital expenditures, there's almost $200,000 sitting there, nothing being done. Not a penny has been spent, at least in the first quarter. Well, because we, we don't do anything with it? We don't spend capital because you don't approve it until the end of March, so we don't do any capital until after it's approved. So the first quarter there'd be nothing done. Okay. Nursing home overtime line zero zero five. Two hundred thousand dollars I think was appropriated. You already used thirty six percent of it. Be careful with the overtime, please. It's already gone past that. Environmental services line zero zero five forty forty one percent used in the first quarter. I don't know what exactly it is. It's Special services line 060 use 60 percent. They got to check on those. Where, where? Special services? That's what it says. 5193. Oh, 5193. Oh, Those are the only oh, skills that I yeah. have. Yeah, if you look at the revenue, it should be just as much. Those are both. It's seven. offsetting revenue, yeah. The entire revenue lines, to me, look like they're all a little bit low compared to the, the past, but I think it'll kick in, I hope. Okay, the, number, the number at that point, are we at 25, what's the bottom line? 22%. I just ask if those are real numbers. Those Where? Are, those are true and as correct as you believe they to be. I on, on expenses or revenue? Yeah, expenses. Yes. Further questions? We can move to expenses. Could we move on to expenses, please, or income? Revenue? Um, you notice in, in the sh in the farm, of course, that's uh, always low in the first quarter. Uh, in the sheriffs, it should be low in the first quarter because um, of uh, of U.S. forestry didn't start that till around May. Uh, special details, we didn't have a lot in the first quarter, uh, and uh, 
Uh, the dispatch income from Milton, we get that around the second quarter. We, we've already received it, so that's already in the in the bank. Okay. Uh, the rest of the deeds we went over. Would you help me understand where we are with farm income? Yes, sir. I knew this. Um, my understanding is we have a agreement with White Lake State Park and others uh, for at least 450 bundles or some number. Where uh, are more than that. Um, okay, so wh where are we? What are, what are we delivering? So uh, the, the hay revenue so far is about 5,000. We have about 2,300, we have about 2,300 of uh, hay bales sitting in the barn. Uh, we've sold uh, about 300 so far. Uh, let me tell you how many. <clears throat> and we've sold about, uh, 2,000. We've, we've, we've done, uh, uh, two deliveries up at White Lake, and there are 500 uh, bundles a uh, uh, delivery. So we've done over a thousand already, and, and we have a delivery today. See, and when I when I wander through the property, it looks like we have probably still 60 percent of our wood unprocessed, mm -hmm. and then uh, I'm sure you can get back to us and tell us where we are with that. We're having the inmates do it on inside the fence. Because we're not having, as again, I know it's a broken record, but we're not having as many inmates come out to help bale or to do wood. So we're processing the wood and then dumping it over or transporting it over to, to where the gate is and having inmates behind the gate do it because there aren't enough people who are sentenced to come out. So we're doing sentence people on the inside and they're wrapping up the bundles under a, a supervision of a we, uh, we had lost an individual who worked for us for a number of years. Has that person been replaced? Uh, to, to my knowledge, no, it has not. Interview set Thursday, Friday. Uh, we have interviews set up for Thursday, Friday. Is, are we to a point with bundled wood with the constraints we're in that we should chop it up and sell it as a cordwood and be out of the business? <coughs> we could do that. Yeah. You, Last year you didn't want us to do that, but I guess if you want us to do that now, we we, we well, could. I I only raised that point right. because you had a great income stream, and we did other things <coughs> during the winter. The mm -hmm. pile sat there, yeah. and it does not appear to be a priority. And then my understanding is that the grounds then have become an issue. And, uh, those have and now and now we we've, we've made a process that was supposed to be extremely efficient, more cumbersome, we're not delivering the product. So I, I'm guessing, you know, it's, it's time for you to reevaluate, you know, where you need to be with that. And, and I've said, said my, my piece to the commissioners. And so you have, uh, you've had a, you had a great first cut, um, with your initial take in of the hay. And I'm, I'm sure that if I look on the website, that's up for sale and it's and, advertised. And we still have many fields to cut. Okay. We've only cut three fields okay. out, of, out of the eight that we have. And what, what, was, the, what, was, the, um, what was the final outcome, if you can enlighten me, on the blueberry production and what's happening with that? Um, I know the Carroll County Lands Advisory I, Committee had, had brought a proposal forward, or the commissioner is still moving forward with picking their own blueberries, or? No, I think we've, I, I think the commissioners, well, we, yes, thank you, sir. Uh, last week, uh, the uh, Land Use Committee came and gave a report to the commissioners, and one of the members, Dale Drew from Pondwood, came with a, an interesting uh, proposal, one that the commissioners, uh, accepted was to, uh, for this year, uh, was to allow the Boy Scouts, the Scouts, I shouldn't say Boy Scouts, it's, they include girls now, so scoutings, uh, several troops uh, starting with uh, 150 in North Carolina, I believe they spoke of the Wolfboro Troop, and I think there may have been three. There's, there's, there's quite a group yeah. that's pulled together. And so uh, we uh, appointed uh, Dale Drew as the coordinator of uh, the Blueberry Scouts Blueberry Field to see if these 
young people can come in and harvest the berries and, and uh, take care of the fields as we continue to find out what is the best long-term option. It looked like for this year it's at least worthwhile to get the berries picked for some use. Uh, we also uh, gave permission for them to uh, coordinating with Ken to uh, have a campery or something on uh, of that nature on county property, uh, knowing that they have to have all the insurances and everything in place before they can do that, and proper supervision, safety, and and whatnot. So that's what the commission has have done with the blueberries that I would say is a positive step forward. To at least I, do I, I, I commend the commissioners. I think it's extremely positive involving the youth. The monies that we were going to generate did not even equate to the $1,500 that I understand was expense for blueberries, whether it be insecticide, uh, mulch, and so forth, that I don't believe we had approved anyways for the blueberries. So I, I, I think that's absolutely wonderful. And I think that's what the Carroll County Lands Commission has been looking for, is, is the continued care of, care of our, our uh, lands uh, without expense. Yes? We also had a presentation last, uh, recently um, from a couple, of, uh, a couple of brothers who are interested in, in, in haying the property next year. Um, Commissioner Babson actually, um, uh, he actually brought them in. They gave a presentation, um, and I think uh, the commissioners are, are seriously looking at that, possibly for next year. Um, well, all depends on, on and, and they're willing to do it either way, either split the hay, um, cut the hay, we, leave, we sell it, however we want to do it, they're pretty amicable to, to, to any terms, um, which would, you know, uh, which would help us for not having to hate the fields anymore. Are they um, interested in the rest of this year? Good question. Uh, yeah, the bid process to go through. And I don't think we can do anything like that this year, Representative Chandler, because of the process requiring uh, requests for proposals and all that and scrutinize them. But then the season would probably be pretty much over, but I, I think there's potential for, for next year. I will say this, that the uh, Land Use Committee has slugged through a lot of different things in the stat to bring ideas. Uh, there was another one that was brought forward that I think might have legs at some point, and that is to create, uh, tra uh, develop trails, but uh, in particular maybe for horse riding. There's some things like that. At, at the point. So uh, I, I really appreciate the work that they're doing because it's uh, that 900 acres, it has to be some sort of plan together. Thank you. Where's that Did you have a question? Yeah, how is the pumpkins doing? I, they're growing. <laughs> 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 Just wondering, I mean, how is that being paid for? Me. No county employees, no None. county lands, no county uses or any, nothing? Well, I don't know about the county land, but the pumpkins are on county land, so super cost. But if, any if I could, the, the, the that superintendent, that no one else has participated in, in the process? Harrowing, planting? No. Well, watering. I can't say that Will didn't work for about 10 minutes with me the first time to show me how we should align it. I don't have a green thumb. The rest of it's my experience. So when when your when your crop comes to fruition, your crop, your time, what's going to happen then? And where I guess my question is for the commissioners: Were they in agreement and met and agreed that this was something they wanted to do and and baptize you to be the pumpkin caretaker? Okay. Yeah. Pumpkin caretaker. <laughs> uh, the question is: Is there a lease or no? How many lands? There's no lease, and my understanding is the pumpkins belong to the county, not Mr. Babson. Yeah. I just ask a question. Do we do anything with the food pantries in the county? Uh, we used to when when we picked the blueberries and when we had a garden, <coughs> we would donate a lot. My first year here, that, that that's what they did. A lot of food and a lot of vegetables and a lot of blueberries that were donated. Um, but the problem is that all. You know, when they grow cantaloupes, everything came out at once. So 
we have 2,000 pounds of cantaloupe. <laughs> it, it wasn't planned right, you know? We didn't do the crop. Right. <laughs> Just get rid of I know that the town, the town gardens in Wolfboro, some people volunteer to maintain it, and the food, food goes to the food no, he ended okay. up. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. We'll, 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 wrap, we'll, wrap, we'll wrap this up. Wrap this up. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so what I want, what I want to let everyone know, I, I approve of it. I thought it was a good thing. I still think it's a good thing. Uh, the, the, the expense of it is all on David Babson. The fruit of it is all on us. The uh, we, we're not reimbursing for seeds. Those pumpkins are coming out of county ground. Those pumpkins belong to county, and hopefully that these are something that we can generate together to better the county. But, uh, whether in revenue or feeding people. But, but, uh, but my understanding is that fertilizer did come from the county. It's my understanding that equipment from the county was heralded. And it's my understanding, and I hope I'm incorrect, that county employees were used in the planting of, of that. And I want to be assured that, that number one, that's different than what I'm being told. I'm not going to belabor the point. We'll let we'll let it go through its season, and and we will look at it then. So, so if anyone wants to plant five acres of something or one acre of something, they can just come to the commissioners, and commissioners can just say, go ahead and do whatever it is you want to do on the property. But whatever you grow is the property of the county. I wouldn't say that that's the case, sir. I would. Uh, Good cash. I would. Uh, I think this is a good I, thing I, all the way up. I think we're fine. Okay. So, on other other questions on uh, on the revenues. And as soon as as soon as the numbers are available for where we are at the earliest convenience, if you could distribute that, please. Follow up on delegation audit items. Uh, we had submitted a list of questions or items that, the, that we were looking to have added to the audit. I have, I'm going to handle this at the same time we handle our performance audit update. So I guess actually I'll go out, I'll go out of court. I'll go performance audit update. Representative Cordelli could not be here today. If there's other, if there's other members of, of, that, uh, of that committee that want to speak, I have five items where we are. The RFP has been sent to seven firms, including those who responded uh, to the 2014 RFP. Number two, the RFP was posted on the county website. Number three, the RFP response are due by July 15th. Number four, the subcommittee meeting is being scheduled to review the responses. And five, a recommendation of the subcommittee will be presented uh, at a full delegation meeting. So I don't know if the delegation has any further questions. We can distribute those. Um, and that's where we are with performance audit at this point. Frank. So on the, on the audit items that we had requested, and I believe there were five, and I believe the commissioners had questions. I think we resolved the question as to whether or not we could ask for those items. And I believe that's it was found out to be uh, that the RSA provide us that opportunity. I believe the uh, commissioners uh, begrudgingly then asked to go out and find out what the cost of those items would be um, if they were to be added. And um, I, uh, Representative Avalani, I think we've had some discussion on this and um, uh, somewhat of a prioritization on, on the top two items perhaps, or? I, th I think so. Just keep the keep the cost down to the taxpayers. Um, we will more than likely, uh, if we all back budget budget next year for a uh, our independent audit. So we, my understanding was the top two items, uh, the delegation, unless I'm hearing different, would like to move forward with, and Representative McCarthy. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I disagree. The simple reason that the law is very specific. The, the, the accounting firm is supposed to be knowledgeable of the laws of the state that they're working in. And if they knew what the law says relative to county audit, they would have expected that what it states in here, that you can do what we did, they would have expected that would, would have happened and it would have been added into the original contract. They come up and say, oh, we didn't know about this. This shows that they're totally naive relative to 
state law, the county audits. And for them to say they're going to add $11,000 on to do what they, the law says they're supposed to do in an audit is to me ludicrous. Thank you. Could someone clarify me what the heck are we talking about? <laughs> the, um, the delegation had put together a number of items um, that we wanted added to the audit to be looked at by the direction of the delegation. And there were. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. 28 colon 3A county audit. In the event that an order is required, the commissioners with the approval of the executive committee of the county convention shall engage the services of a certified public accountant qualified municipal and county finance for the purpose of conducting an audit of the county books of account. The performance and scope of the audit shall be in accordance with generally accepted auditing practice. The audit shall include an examination for conformance with state and federal laws and regulations relating to county finance, including rules adopted by the Commissioner of Revenue Administration pursuant to RSA 541-A, and shall also include an examination of any subject of the county's finances that may be requested either by the commissioners, by the county convention, or by the treasurer. The audit shall be completed within 90 days, and even started yet, and we're six months. Anyway, those are the things that the auditing firm should have been aware of when they first contracted to do the audit. Now they're saying, oh, you gave us a list of things to look into, which is in the law, but we're going to charge you $11,000 more. Thank you. Thank you, Representative McCarthy. I was hoping you had my list of five. Is what I was hoping mm -hmm. was. So, and I believe, if I remember right, Representative Adelaide, one was a question <coughs> on the Eastern propane. Yes. And one was on, was it a credit card use? Credit card use. Yes. So I, unless I hear differently from the delegation, it would be our wish that those two items would be handled in that order. Representative McCarthy. Uh, on the uh, the credit card use, I can I, I can see taking that off if it's going to save the county some money. But to do that, I would also recommend or, or propose that in accordance with law, the county delegation audit the credit cards once a quarter. Thank you for that point, and I and I don't disagree with that, and I I believe I'll, I'll jump ahead that uh, uh, there's a legislative uh, update under House Bill 1304 that I was going to speak to that authorizes the county delegation to authorize a forensic audit, and uh, we will see who is sitting at this table come next year, but I, I for one would think that we would handle that during that process. So. I, I think we will move to the next item. And clarification. Yes. yes. Um, so we are agreed, uh, according to what you have said, that um, the audit will uh, deal with questions relative to Eastern propane and credit card use. Is that my understanding? Which were our top two items of the five. And we will take up the rest or we'll look at that at the next cycle as we will consider whether a forensic audit uh, I think the policy question um, that Representative McCarthy has brought up on a quarterly review of credit cards would also breathe confidence <coughs> into, into people. Um, and I hope at the end of all of these that we find that we our financial system is in order and that everything is being done properly. I, that's, that's my hope. But I think we need to means test some things going forward. Yeah. The next delegation. And the additional cost relative to these two pieces will be covered within the cost of the audit. There'll be there'll be additional costs, and we'll have to deal with that if there's an appropriation. I'm sure it's not a lot. Okay. Okay. We'll move to the next item. Do a motion. Do we need a motion? Yeah. Okay. okay. Do I motion? For what? Those two questions, please. Motion to. Um, Okay, now the questions to the Eastern Propane and the credit card use. Second. Any discussion? If you're in favor of the motion, I'll signify by saying aye. 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 If you're opposed, nay. Motion. No. One, one dissent. Um, 
Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, uh, I didn't get the agenda prior, so I would have uh, I would have pointed out to you. Um, I had sent you. Uh, I don't see our uh, our energy audit from Siemens presentation on here. Um, he's here today to do a, like a ten minute thing. Um, if if we could squeeze him in, do you think? We'll, we'll, we'll carry him in at the end of okay, the Okay, thank you. So legislative update, we've taken care of the Carroll County Advisory Committee. I will just say that I believe uh, Commissioner Hounsell and I have had a robust discussion on that and that communication lines are now open between Sorry the two. That. Having sat on that committee for well over a year, I think we're now understanding that we're working on behalf of the county. Mm -hmm and that um, we'll continue to do that. And this step by Mr. Drew, who's a member of bringing together the different groups and uh, making use of the county lands and then the scouts in return are gonna help build your trail network that's years behind and other things going forward. And I think we can reach forward um, and protect this valuable resource that we own. As long as we stay together, uh, I believe that group now will be feel much better and confident that they're being considered. Um, so at, at the, the presentation by Siemens, is that going to require any any motion by the convention? It may. Uh, the commissioners, um, I, I forwarded to you this last week. Um, these uh, are worksheets. The commissioners are, are looking to move forward with this. Um, and uh, we, we're looking for $4.7 million of, of, of capital improvements for about $2.5 million. Um, pretty close, right? Is that right? Well, yeah. the project itself um, is 4.7. Well, that's Mr. Just, Mr. Chairman, can you yeah. identify yourself, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. I'm Sean Foy. I'm um, the account manager with Siemens. Um, we're part of the team uh, that, you were, that we were selected as part of the RFQ process for the performance contract. And we've, we've been working on this for uh, you know, almost a year now. Um, well, once you school, is, is he permitted to go on? I, I would ask at the hour, and I know this important subject, whether we handle this at the next time where you can give us just a, a cap of where you're at. And I guess my question is, do you have money in, the, in, your, in your budget to implement this, or is this if you go forward with this plan, then we're going to have to meet again anyways to find that money. We're going to have to meet to give permission to go out uh, to, uh, to the banks to get the money. Uh, but there's uh, about $2 million of savings that will apply towards it. Uh, the county will have to come up with 122000 a year to, to offset the, uh, the uh, $4.7 million worth of uh, improvements. So how about if you just give them like five minutes to go over some of the things? I'd love to. Go ahead. And then come back. Well, I just, I just want to point something out. I think his, his coming today is to brief you on what we're working on. We're not really looking at the point where we have anything to ask. The commissioners have voted to put out an uh, RFP for financing for this overall plan. So I want to just kind of contain it in there. This is more like an introduction. Okay. Why don't why don't we why don't we finish up the stay seated if you would, sir? Sure. Why don't we finish up our convention our delegation business and then we'll take that presentation. If that's agreeable. There's other people that have to move or leave. Mr. Chair? Yes. I'll propose that I'll send the video of his presentation that he gave last week to all of you so you can see it in detail. It has all the slides and everything. Thank you. And I, and I think your work's absolutely wonderful, and I'm excited the commissioners are looking forward. And I apologize, but we've, we've had a long day. Um, so take a, to go into convention, motion. Mm -hmm. So move, Mr. Chairman. Oh, excuse me, go right ahead. I just wanted to ask for one thing, um, and I, I don't know why, but I am wondering if, um, now that we are blessed to have, have our uh, clerk back, um, that, that the delegation, um, that our agenda, shouldn't this be out to the public before our meetings? Um, I, do we I ever would, post them for the public? Or? I, would, I would love to do that, and now that we're back in the employ of someone to help with that, we're, we're going to do everything we can to do that. Because I think that's we, we need, we need to post. Sure we, they yeah, we need to post that we're meeting, but we will, we will strive to do that. 
Representative Powell. Thank you. Um, before we go into convention, um, has there been any discussion about um, the uh, need for the assistant in the office um, to talk with the commissioners about how you're going to bring that forward um, and to talk about how to bring that to the delegation? Is it possible that you can make some kind of a proposal um, for the next uh, meeting of the delegation? I understand that that's still something that you would like to see. I was, I was going to ask for it today, actually. Um, well, it seems like time is fleeting. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'm requesting that 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 the delegation um, refund the uh, administrative assistant position. And what's that cost? Uh, fifth, uh, see, I had it today. So many papers. I believe for the rest of the year it's um fifteen six, but fifteen seven. Mr. Chairman, if I might. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, I would move to approve uh, an addition in the budget of 157 for an administrative assistant within the uh, administration office. My understanding is that uh, allowing that, as you termed it earlier, uh, reception person, would allow uh, the remaining person in the office to actually uh, function better um, looking at our finances and posting and uh, not having necessarily to work uh, uh, overtime. Um, my understanding was that we needed to have somebody um, in our position as a delegation assistant, um, which is now there. Um, I understand this is not a part of the agenda, uh, the formal agenda, but I think it's important enough to consider. Second. So I would move that money. I'll second the motion. Motion's been made and seconded to add, what was the number? 157. 157 for salary and um, ancillary costs of FICA and retirement. And, uh, okay, motion's been made, seconded, so discussion. What's the final number? I had it here. Um, I can run and get it. I have it all set up. I printed it right before I came up. It's 157. Uh, retirement's a little over 1,200. Uh, Social Security's 900. And uh, uh, FICA is a, a couple hundred dollars. We're going to need an exact number. Okay, I'll go down and get it. Sure. I'll take public input. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to speak? Could we have met the, met the gentleman from Mr. Se from Siemens do his presentation? Yeah, we could. I'd, I'd rather finish up convention business, but um, in the voting order. Yeah. Actually, here we do have a vote. Sorry. Uh, what I what I will ask the commissioners. Uh, so at this point in time, you're and I, I will I will say for the record that the uh, chairman of the commissioners, Bubard, had a uh, place she needed to be and couldn't be here today, but she did uh, uh, let me know ahead of time uh, that she her presence wasn't going to be here. So without without having an HR person and handling things internally. And I had asked before what the county's policy was on, um, on and I'm gonna get the term wrong, workplace violence, uh, bullying and so forth, sexual harassment. And that was my understanding that you had a policy previously. It's my understanding and not just my own that there's a 
uh, an unusual, inordinate amount of women that leave our employ for some reason. Have the commissioners adjusted, looked at their policy, and are you satisfied where it is? And perhaps might I suggest that you have a conversation with the county attorney, because maybe in the interim the county attorney could possibly review or assist or see if she'd be willing to, or does the county commissioners feel that the county has a good handle on that and that perhaps my assumptions totally incorrect and what you're doing presently is fine? Yes. I, again, I'm not speaking for the commission, but I'm speaking as a commissioner. Everything, and I mean everything, in government is subject to improvement. Uh, there's never a time when you can say, yeah, we've got this done, we don't have to go any further. Uh, the issue of, uh, of uh, how you treat uh, your employees, both but in their pay and in their uh, benefits, but also their environment is critical. Uh, times change, so policies need to change. Uh, this is a task that has to take place, the one that you described. We should look at this policy. I'm sure there's places that should be improved, and I like the idea of uh, including people uh, who are familiar with that, such as the county attorney, if she's available, or others. Uh, so I'm absolutely, um, speaking for myself, willing to look at uh, not only this policy to improve things, but all policies. Uh, one of the things that we do have, and I don't know why people leave as they do, but the, uh, the, uh, the pay that we pay in our the pay that we pay our, our nursing staff is, is seriously low. I'm, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about pay. No, that's, I'm just talking about discussion. reasons why people might leave. I, I, I can't just say that, that a person is leaving for this reason or that. But I do think that uh, people come and go and stay uh, based on salary benefits and the workplace environment, and that includes a sense that they're appreciated or, or feel safe. So, uh, yeah. I think you're. I think you're right on. I think we need to continue to do uh, reviews. Um, I, so is that something that you'll discuss with Representative Babson and the others? And oh, I'll bring it up. Poss I'll bring possibly, it up next week. Next possibly time. reach out to the sure. county attorney. See, sure. you. Yeah. Uh, Representative Babson, or Commissioner Babson, you don't have an objection to that. Oh, okay, good. Oh, I'm sorry, Superintendent. Superintendent Henry, Henry for the record. Just so you know that those policies you're talking about are actually being worked on now. Myself and other department heads, along with Ken, have been meeting uh, every two weeks, Ken, mm -hmm. and we're doing all the handbook policy for the entire complex. And Ken has reached out to also Primex and to uh, lawyers to look at the sexual harassment and all those policies as well. So being vetted out through that way, plus uh, looking at multiple different sources and redoing it all again. Thank you. My, my so, understanding is when we did have an HR person, there were tapes, reviews, and things were happening. That's not happening. The, the highest law enforcement officer in our county is the, is the uh, county attorney, and it would be my hope that you have conversations with her and bring that level in, if she's willing. She's an elected official, but I, I suggest that you do. I'm sorry, we'll come back to you again. I've, uh, over the past three months, I've, I've had training for every staff member, um, every elected official um, on, on workplace, um, workplace uh, harassment, workplace bullying. Um, everyone's gone to it. We even have it on, on uh, video for all new hires that, that, that would come in. Um, so I brought someone into the county uh, to, to do this for, every, for, for everyone. Um, we went through it, um, and everyone signed off that they went through it. So, you know, we, we, along with that, and along with um, updating our handbook, um, and I, you know, I just went to a class um, last week. Well, I think that's probably that's a good idea. idea. So, oh, absolutely. We so, I mean, I, I've gone, I've, I've made an effort to well, I understand other agencies have come in and done those. So when, when we say that, you know, we brought a man, I... I did. I, I brought a consultant in. Okay. All right. Let's, uh, let's go on to the business uh, before us on the vote, which is the uh, uh, total appropriation for this individual. Is uh, $15,700. 
Uh, FICA is 967.20. Medicare is 226.20. And retirement is 17.75. For a total of, I'm sorry, I said it was that? Oh, 50, no, I don't know. Sorry. <coughs> Eighteen thousand six hundred sixty-eight dollars and forty cents. Eighteen six six eight forty. Okay. Again, please. Eighteen six six eight forty. Representative Babylon, is that a full-time position? Uh, yes, it is. So they'd be eligible for benefits. Yes. Could you tell us the cost of benefits? Uh, the cost of benefits is uh, for we pay for. The single plan of the of the um, of the dental and twenty percent of if they pick a single family or a two person plan. Did you pay what percent? Eighty percent. But they pay twenty. Sorry. Do we also pay for part of the deductible? Uh, after after the, the first thousand, we pay the next thousand. So what's the total cost? If they take health insurance on a single plan, uh, top of my head, I don't know. Um, and the cost of the rest of the year's dental would be another question. Uh, that would be uh, twelve dollars. Uh, twelve dollars a week. So. Twenty-six. So a single single person plan is we know that number, don't we? What we're paying for a single nine sixty one. Does that sound familiar? That's what's going So nine sixty one is what we pay for that. Yeah. So we can add that to eighteen thousand six hundred sixty eight forty. Mm -hmm. I would assume three thirteen on the dental. Three thirteen on the dental. I apologize, uh, Mr. Treasurer. I forgot you were there. So, what's our what's our three number? What's our new number? We're still that. Okay. Doing it the old fashioned way. Okay. How about nineteen thousand nine forty two forty? Right, so part-time position or a full-time position to take you through the rest of the year for administrator, which are for a receptionist, whatever the title might be. Uh, my understanding, we're looking for an appropriation of nineteen thousand nine hundred forty-two dollars and forty cents. Question: The move that's been moved and seconded. Discussion. You mentioned single coverage. Can they get family coverage as well? Yeah, but but we only pay. Um, uh, eight, eight, uh, we don't pay 80% of the family, do we? Yeah, you do. Yeah. yeah. Family is about 30000 for Yeah. Well, total. Total cost is 30000 for a family. But, but um, in this position, we only offer the single person. No. 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 So that they could they could elect to go to the family. Sure. And we pay 80% of that. They pay 20%. And that is $30,000, so. But more or less. Excuse me. So, <laughs> so that twice twice the value of the salary. Okay. Hmm. A year. The salary is only talking six months, right? Right. Yes. The insurance is figured on six months. Okay, so we have a motion. Any further discussion? Representative Buco. Where's the money coming from? Good question. <laughs> we'll have to transfer it from somewhere in our budget. 
Why would you have that sort of money? Uh -huh. um, and another question is how do we how do we fund uh, all those all the all the contracts? Yes. Dude, that's a that's that's another question we never talked about. So we we will we will need to meet again, mm -hmm. Commissioner. So if you pass the, the motion without the funding, I, I would be very hesitant to fill the position. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I move the table this time. Uh, uh, can I? Motion, motion's made the table. Is second. there a second to the table? Motion's been made, it has been seconded. I'll take the madam's question. I was just wondering if, it, if a half-time person might be, at least be a help if we can, if we don't feel we can fund the whole. Thank you, thank you for the question. So the motion, motion's been made to table, and it has been seconded. If you're in favor of the motion, you're signified by saying aye. 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 If you're opposed, nay. Nay. Motion is not unanimous, it does not carry by one. Thank you. If I could? Yes. Thank you. Um, I had said uh, if we should discuss this at the next uh, uh, meeting, but it sounds like what we need to do is to consider um, a uh, a special budget uh, meeting in order to deal with the issues of the contract and possibly this. So um, hopefully there will be discussion about how we can uh, find a way to appropriate the monies necessary. Representative McCarthy. Special budget meeting, you're talking about a supplemental budget? Or Thank you. I, I'm not good with the language. Uh, or a supplemental budget or a loan? I'll, I'll leave that up to well, the chair. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that. Representative Madeline. Seeing as we've had multiple years of million dollar plus surpluses, I find it difficult to believe that we would need a supplement to budget to cover this. Some clarification is needed. Yes, before we vote before we vote to expend money, we don't know where it's coming from. Okay, so we've, we, yes. So we, we've, taken, we've taken up the delegation's business. I would accept a motion to go into convention. So moved. Second moved and seconded by Bonnie and Butler. Uh, we are now in convention. Move to ratify the uh, actions we took today. Motion's been made to ratify actions Second. uh, and seconded. Uh, for the discussion, if you're in favor of that, you'll signify by saying aye. 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 If you're opposed, nay. Motion passed unanimously. I accept a motion to come out of the convention by Avalani, seconded by Butler. <laughs> so moved. And we are now out of, uh, if you're in favor of coming out of convention, and signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. We are now out of convention, and we would like to hear from you, sir, on your presentation. Thank you very much. Um, I think I'll obviously, given the time today, I really appreciate you having me. I'll give me a few minutes. So. Uh, just like to recap, I guess, what we've done over the past uh, 10 or 11 months and give you a couple highlights to consider for the next meeting, if that's all right. Um, so over the past 10 or 11 months, we've worked, as we were selected, we began to uh, walk through your buildings and develop and analyze your utility budget. Uh, and our en engineering team and energy engineers uh, built a prelim preliminary report that we presented to the commissioners as facility improvement measures um, for each of your facilities. Uh, from there, we that was approved and we moved on to do an uh, investment grade audit, which includes design of boiler rooms, um, extensive engineering measures, and things of that nature. From there, we've also applied for and we consider all and uh, ever, uh, any kind of energy savings incentives um, through Eversource. Thank you. Sir. These are all listed on this, this sheet, I believe, that, that Ken sent around. Um, that's something for you to, to look at for next time. But in and each of these columns, you will see uh, the facility approval measure that, that we selected and recommended. And in each building, in, um, to Representative McCarthy's concern, the propane and uh, where things are going. But there's a, a couple of the boiler rooms. One of the boiler rooms at the correction facility is going to be the boilers are going to be replaced there. Um, the, bo the boilers here. So those will be moving from from the lower efficiency that they're at now to higher efficiency condensing boilers. So. On top of the, the savings, and the other thing to consider too is all these savings that we have recommended here um, and proposed are guaranteed savings. So as part of a performance contract, these savings are guaranteed year by year. And they're also measured and verified each year as well. Um, so after construction, after that first year, Siemens will come back. I mean, we're, we're not going anywhere, but we'll come back with an MNV team to actually calculate and say that we did reach the savings. If we don't reach the savings for whatever reason, then Siemens would 
Siemens would try to check to see if it counted for the difference that wasn't met. Um, again, these, save, these savings numbers are typically conservative, so we, you know, 99% of our customers usually see savings above and beyond that as well. Um, Another consideration is there is uh, the Eversource incentives here, right here that we have as of right now are 92629 We're going to be looking to get potentially some custom rebates for the boiler rooms. Um, those could potentially be another $90,000. We didn't put it on here because we're not sure at this point if they're available. But as the project gets approved, we will submit those applications as soon as possible and let you know. We can report back at that time if those are available. Um, so like, like Ken was mentioning, the, the, so as part of the performance contract, we look at, we came in and we were tasked to look at energy savings projects, and we also looked at infrastructure. So you'll see some facility improvement measures on here that are not necessarily tied to energy savings. For example, the roofing, um, we're going to re uh, replace and, and move the air conditioning, the condensing units at the Department of Corrections from inside the fencing area to outside, and change the refrigerant from an R22, which is, going, which is not going out of stock not going to be available and moving to a more efficient refrigerant. So that's, that'll be part of this project as well. So there's some capital improvement measures that you're, that you're looking at that um, Ken and Bob recommended and we teamed together. Uh, so you have a mix of energy savings and then you have the capital improvement measures. So when Ken was mentioning that there on the bottom, there's the energy savings each year of 124160 That's the guaranteed savings. The total project cost uh, right now is a 3.443264. And then to get to, so the, with the energy savings and with, there's a uh, Carroll County an annual contribution that for 122,500, which would get you to that point of the 3.4. So the energy savings does about half the project, and then there's a, to get the capital improvement measures done, that contribution would be made each year for 17 years. So it allows you to do infrastructure improvements instead of coming up with all that money up front. It allows you to spread it out over the life of the contract. Um, that's really the, the highlight of the project so far. Uh, again, I thank you. That's five minutes or so, I hope so. That's, uh, that's absolutely wonderful. My, my question is, have, have, you, have you looked at this in a, in a big picture? Mm -hmm. um, for instance, when we decided we were going to go with a pellet boiler to take care of the nursing home, your corporation, G, and others were out there putting together larger projects it heated multiple buildings by biomass and so forth. Did, did you open up, and, and I know the savings are there, and it makes sense for our infrastructure that we're going to make these improvements. Did you look at what really, where it really should be, or were you constrained in the amount of money that you spent? No, we did, yeah, our team looked at that. Um, so, I, you know, it's, as far as are you talking like a sort of like a central plant? If, if that if that made sense or not, I'm just saying was any of that taken off the table, or was all of that under consideration? And has Siemens Corporation yeah. ever worked on projects of a larger scale? We have, yeah, we've done um, central heating plants before, and depending on piping constraints and how the distance between buildings and things of that nature, um, I know that's one of the first things we talked with Bob about. Um, and just Bob's getting, wonderful, so. Yes. I make sure he's publicly, if I can say that both of Ken and Bob have been fantastic to work with, they've really helped us out a lot. Um, but yes, that's given the cost of that initial that measure, um, it was something that we didn't feel like we would recommend at this time. But okay, yeah. all right. I, I bring up the point because when we had the discussion before, there was a conversation that we were looking at a million dollars, and the bigger picture was four or five million dollars and didn't think the delegation would have an appetite to do that. I just want to make sure that when you entered into this project and it's, in it, it's savings for years to come and taking care of boilers and everything, I just want to make sure that you understand that this delegation really is looking for the big picture sure. for a long time. Yeah. If you folks are all satisfied that you've done that, then I've said my piece. Other questions for this gentleman? Um, the presentation that you will forward, uh, Represent Kamo, um, covers this in a broader way. Uh, fully, with 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 um, spreadsheets and Excellent. full audio and visual presentation. Thank you. Yes, sir. There's also a detailed scope of work as well. Um, so when I say I say generalized boiler rooms, but the last thing we actually list out the boilers we're going to use and parts and pieces and everything from that to the to what type of roofing would be here, uh, the VRF system. How that works. 
so the whole package is included. Thank you. Thank you. Representative McCarthy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Please excuse my naivete, but what is a building envelope? Yeah, good question. Yeah. Building envelope is basically the out, the outer perimeter of the building. Okay. So we had a com we had two companies come in to look at the as far as uh, any kind of ceiling, any kind of uh, crack infiltration, and on the out exterior of the building by the roofs. Um, for example, at the Department of Corrections, we found a few areas that were not insulated by the roof, um, and where it meets the wall. So that area, that all that would be part of. <clears throat> again, it's just it's tightening up the envelope on the outside of the building, and also looking at doors, any kind of crack infiltration on doors and seals and things like that. Thank you. Any further questions? Thank you, for sir, for waiting for us all this time. No, Thank thanks you. for your time. Look forward to continued conversation. Great, thanks. If there's, if there's nothing else to be brought up at this time, entertain a motion to adjourn. So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. And move and second. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Uh, yeah. aye. We have a, we can't adjourn, we have transfers we need to do. Right. Okay, so I will rescind the, uh, um, re 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 reconsider. We will, we will recess our main meeting to move into executive decision. Okay. Motion to reconsider is, is in part of that, and we are moving to, Representative Avalon? Recess our main meeting and move into uh, executive we have some transfers uh, to, to uh, conduct. If you're in favor of that uh, motion, signified by saying aye. Aye. Uh, what is the motion? To recess. recess. Take back to adjourn to recess. We have a, we have transfers that need to be attended to. Yes. Okay. Are you in favor of that? Doing it now rather than adjourn. Correct. Yes. Is for the county attorney. Okay, thank you. Is um so uh, the uh, a county attorney needs six thousand um, dollars to uh, bring back a victim and a witness from the Midwest, um, and we're asking that we take it out of the medical insurance line and put it in the criminal case expense. Okay. Questions. Medical insurance. Uh, yes, uh, out of this building. And and you're comfortable that we won't need to worry about that. Yes, <laughs> six thousand. I think we can say yes for that. Okay. Further question. Madam Attorney, I am very pleased with some of your recent accomplishments. I just want to make mention of thank you. Thank you for what you're doing and, and uh, the cases that you're winning. Thank you. Um, hearing no further discussion, so a, a motion to accept. So moved. Second. Thank Second. You. Okay. If you're in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Yes, for aye. Those opposed? Nay. Passes. Uh, I have the original, I'm assuming. Is that your uh, I'm uh, passing out the original. There you go, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you very much. Sure, do you Transfer number one. Request number one. Request number two. Transfer number two is out of the MVC Environmental Services. Uh, we're uh, we have we're we're down three uh, uh, we're down three environmental services workers. Uh, we're actively filling those roles as we go, and we're uh, filling in, in with overtime uh, in the meantime. I, so Bob wants to transfer $990, $990 from salary to overtime. This is just informational, as we have uh, under $1,000. Um, so I just want to let you know that um, Bob is actively uh, interviewing uh, for, those, for those positions. He's still two. Um, they, you, had, you had a retire a gentleman that retired. Yes. So these are all positions under his employee for that. Oh building. yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. So there's no action. No action. Right. Just, just informational. Okay. Thank you. Number three. No, the sheriff's not here. Um, so the sheriff would like to transfer thirty three thousand seven hundred forty nine dollars from his vehicle. 
uh, from his vehicle expense into his vehicle lease purchase. He, as you know, uh, the delegation approved him to buy two new vehicles this year. Uh, and when he went out uh, to Ford, uh, they came back with a 6.5% interest. Uh, last year, we only paid 3.5%. So he went out to, to the local banks in, in Carroll County, and uh, we got two back, one from, uh, not Norway, see. Thanks, New Hampshire. Uh, yeah, that, that was the last one. Uh, the other one was, um, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the Bank of New Hampshire came back uh, with a 3.1% uh, interest payment. Thus, we can reduce it from a four-year lease to a three-year lease. Uh, and he only budgeted $14,000 uh, for the payments because it was a four-year lease. Now it's a three-year lease, so it's a couple thousand dollars more. But we're saving more on interest. We're saving about three thousand on interest by doing this. Makes sense. Yeah, I think so. Project um, We have sixty-three thousand dollars we've appropriated for that loan. Yeah, 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 but he's got other vehicle leases that he's still making. So he he appropriated fourteen thousand for these two vehicles. Uh, you know, going on the, on the premise of of a three and a half interest rate. Why are we not purchasing? Here, here. Why are we not purchasing outright? Yeah. Well, uh, that's what we, this had us in, uh, actually talking about that for next year. Um, it doesn't make sense to go out to, to lease, but this is what we've always done. Um, and when, when this came up, I had asked the sheriff if he thought about purchasing the vehicles instead of leasing them. Uh, so, might, might I suggest a capital improvement plan for the purchase of vehicles like we do with, in Wakefield? We appropriate so much money on a warrant to have so we can buy it outright so we're not left with payments and interest. Yes. Um, in prior years, though, like, apparently the delegations had no, no appetite for that. I don't know. Um, it, it's the last four years I've been asking for a CIP. I think it's a good idea. Because we looked at leasing and, and, and rentals and everything else, and it's, it's, it's not a cost savings for the taxpayers. Oh, no. Buying outright your vehicle, you have something at the end of your purchase lease to have some type of equity it's just coming up. something else. It's just coming up with $60,000. I mean, no one wants to, you know, people don't want to look at that. But I think we're at twenty seven five for Cusa. Yeah, but, that. The new but, that, the yeah, but then you got to outfit it. Well, the new um, Explorer is at what, 27, 28? And you're moving all-wheel drive vehicles now, so that you well, and, and the Ford Taurus is getting they're yeah, going to so stop making them. Well, going with, more than likely going to all explorers. I don't know what the sheriff wants to do. With yeah, that's undecided. Yeah. I'm sorry, Mr. Representative Butler. Um, I would just uh, note that uh, we're in a budget that's already been defined and approved, and the lease has been done. I totally agree that. Uh, um, doing a capital improvement program and including purchase of vehicles makes a great deal of sense. But at this point, <coughs> this, is, this is what we're dealing with, right? But if, but if that's the appetite now, I will definitely bring it forward. We need to, we need to change that culture. Yeah, I, I agree. We should do that. But again, we're already in the budget, so we can't do it now. Right. So I would move uh, the approval of request number three. Do we still have discussion? No, of course. Even, yes. even after it's seconded. I'll second that for discussion. <laughs> uh, sorry, Dominic. Um, sorry. Um, this lease is for three years? Yes, this would be a three-year payment. Um, the annual payments through this bank. Um, with, with Ford Motor, we were doing four annual payments. One up front, which is what this would pick be. It up. Yep. And then two annual payments after that. So we would own it a year quicker than we owned it for with Ford Motor. And it's uh, got a rate at half the uh, interest. Well, it's expense. a lease, so you turn it back in. It's right? no. purchase. It was lease to purchase. purchase. Oh, we yes. keep them afterwards. Excuse me. And we always have. Okay. <coughs> so it's a purchase at the yes. end. And, okay. and I was incorrect on the on the on the savings of the financing. It's about almost it's thirty three thousand four hundred forty eight dollars in savings. Okay. Over Please. the three years. So. From what we were paying with Ford Motor. Right. Yeah, because when I hear lease, it's okay, well, you get this big. Yeah, lease to You're going back. Okay, lease to own. Right. Oh, yeah, we, we never turn it back in. Okay, all right, great. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? 
If you're in favor of transfer request number three, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion carries unanimous. Is that all that you need, Ken? Yes, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Joe, thank you. I, I just want to say you're absolutely right on. Uh, you know, there's opportunities by doing that um, capital plan mm -hmm. to save future finance and interest judge. One of the things I'll be looking at to see if there's any prepayment penalty and maybe we can even get out of the ones that we have in place okay. now. So I guess. I, I think we can save a few thousand dollars. Thank you. These are the ones I just got the other day. Thank you, Commissioner. Those are last year. I know. <laughs> they ain't the dollar you want. Mr. Chairman, I move to recess the executive committee. Second. Yes. All those in favor? Uh, Signify by saying aye. Aye. Over time. That's going to cease. What? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, yeah. 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 he was down. He was down three people. Did he close? 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 Mr. Chairman, I move to reject to um, I didn't sign reopen the our executive committee meeting. So Second. Wait, wait. Oh, Second. Second. Oh, why did you say that? Please, go ahead. Um, oh, no, there was only two. Sorry. So, we went to the Deeds uh, office, put out an RFP for a replacement multifunction copier, copier yeah. scanner. Yeah. Um, we had an RFP come in, uh, had five options, we chose one. The commissioners approved the purchase. This is coming out of the deeds equipment account, which is non-tax money. It's $2 surcharge for every reported document. Because it's the equipment account, the delegation must approve the expenditure. So we ask you to, I ask you to approve the expenditure for $5,199 for this multi-function copier from the deeds equipment account. From that dedicated fund. Dedicated fund. Right. Represent that line. How many people? Uh, sent in a proposal. Five. And were they opened um, in public? Yes. Thank you. And what was the what was the winning company? Um, Conway. Uh, no. Co Porter office. Porter office. Porter office. And do we also have uh, they, uh, they also have other machines in the building? They do. I've never had done business with them, um, but they they gave a great price. They service the jail. They service the nursing home. And the hey, business, yep. business office. And yeah. And they're all happy with them. So. Yes. Um, have we looked at doing a complex wide contract with them? We still have a contract for our our different machine, second machine that will we want to keep it for the life of the machine. This machine's uh, 15 years old, so it's with a different office. So I'm not sure. That that is a common theme that we have asked for since 2002, and they're working on it, would be my answer. Because we have Representative McCarthy. Um, the, the, the price that you just quoted include a maintenance contract? It does not. Okay. The maintenance contract would come out of the regular budget, and the maintenance contract is separate. But I am purchasing with a maintenance contract. This would just be for the cost How much of the. Is that? Machine. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like uh, it's very, half it's, a penny a copy. It's, it's per and unit. Six or seven cents for the color copy, but you don't do much color. No, not much at all. Do you have sep Do you have separate costs for the machine and then the maintenance contract? Yes. Yes, the machine is you. You buy it outright. Or you lease it, which costs a lot more money down the road. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, okay. I don't buy it outright for how much? $5,199. And then what is the lease, uh, the uh, uh, maintenance contract for you? It depends on how much you use. It will be somewhere around three to $400 a year. Okay. We're okay with that? We did out of money. We're upset about that. Thank you. So can we approve this mm -hmm. as the executive uh, committee? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. It's coming out of dedicated fund, and I don't, I don't see an issue. So. Great. Uh, so, so let's just uh, note it. Uh, for the next meeting as well. Okay. So, Good point. Thank aware. you. So um, I believe the motion's been made and seconded. Has it made, been made? I'll make the motion. I'll second. Okay. And seconded. Well, okay. Whoever. 
So if you're in favor of the motion to permit the registrar to purchase um, this machine, the replacement machine, uh, the numbers that have been discussed, you'll signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Including the maintenance contract. Well, that, that comes out of a separate contract. Oh, that right. comes okay. out of a separate fund. This is monies that she's collected and she has the authority to okay. do. She has to get our approval. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, motion to recess, Mr. Chairman. Real, real motion. Real motion to recess. Second. All those in favor? Motion, motion to what? Adjourning or recess? recess. You're adjourning. This is our third time to attempt to recess. You're recessing. Yeah, I gotta get. I gotta get home. Hi. Jim Bradley's gonna be at my house at two o'clock. We can't adjourn the main meeting. Lock things down, Frank. Oh, Lock things down. Oh, Frank. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Oh, Sorry. So we'll adjourn at the beginning of the next meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we do the same.